Good morning, everybody. You know what time it is. It's your boys, Jack and Dave here, here to provide you guys this watch along this day. Saturday, we're the first ones to get kicked off for this Premier League action. I believe six or seven games left of this season. Crunch time, we're kind of at that stage where we also kind of keep saying we want good performances, but it really only matters is the result. Coming up against Newcastle, storm the castle, as Shawnee Maddox like to say, Dave. Can we do it this time? Double revenge spot, as you like to put it as well. Not just the 4-1 was good enough for us. We need to get another version of that. Can we get another win away from home? Settle this with the Magpies and uh, take some home with us back to London for Magpie dinner. Dave, how are you this morning? Yeah, Jack, I'm absolutely pumped up for today's game. I had Bob Marley redemption song just before we came on and stuff like that. You know, I'm ready. I do want redemption for what happened there last year. I know we took them at our place, but it's not enough. I want to take them at their place too. And I think the opportunity is there with the with the, with the the limited options that Newcastle have. Jacob Murphy playing right back. Werner better run the legs off him in behind. And also Dan Burn out a left back. Johnson better run the legs off him as well. So, um, you know, with Newcastle's makeshift back line, I do believe there is a real opportunity here for us to go on and, uh, you know, give them a right rollicking. What I'd also say is they've got no game changers off the bench. I know Livermento and Hall are on the bench, but if they were fit, they would have been playing. So, um, you know, I, I think the opportunity is here for us to go and slap them. But I also think we need a good win here today, Jack. Um, because I, I think this could be do or die for Champions League, you know, with the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool coming up. Chelsea and Liverpool are away from home. Traditionally, don't do well up there. Um, so, for me, I think today is a must win. We have to put three points on the board today. Um, you know, and um, I do think today is make or break for Champions League. So, I'm pumped. Let's bloody go. I think there's um, games like this that can really help us that, uh, in this tough run of fixtures afterwards. You, you look at the, the tough run of games, I don't really expect that Spurs are going to wallop all of those teams, right, or give them a rollicking, like you said. And I think going into those, though, it would be nice to know that we had beaten at least a pretty decent side like Newcastle mm-hmm. United. Weirdly enough, though, Dave, just before we get to the lovely chat here, and uh, also as well, I see Vicario's on the on the team sheet uh, picture, which uh, I wonder if it is a... Maybe I'm reading too much into things, but maybe a bit of a sign, you know, back to the last time that we came over to Newcastle. But speaking <laughs> of this team, um, and maybe Dark Sun G might know what I mean. Uh, speaking of um, this team, Newcastle, though, Dave, I'm not sure if you guys were able to get to this question uh, in the pre-match buildup. Do you feel like they are they a sign of what could be to come for Spurs? Like, do we have actually weirdly some things in common in our first season under Ange compared to Eddie Howe's more or less first season where they were able to, you know, surpass expectations, finish well above what people expected in the Champions League. And then the following season, for whatever reason, I think the injuries and maybe lack of preparation, they didn't, uh, they really saw their season crumble. Did you get to that question? Do you kind of see what I mean by the the similarities actually, Mm -hmm. weirdly, between these clubs and kind of their manager Mm -hmm. sort of journeys and, you know, kind of arcs and everything? Mm -hmm. No, I'm glad you asked, because, look, I didn't get to answer that one, but the boys did answer it. Um, look, look, for me, Jack, I think there is a lot of similarities, but I also think there's lessons to be learned, right? Yeah, I think right. this season, you know, you look at Newcastle, no European football last year, it really helped them, you know, push for that top four. What I will say is come the back end of the season, though, Newcastle got some big results and capitalised on some of the other teams playing in Europe. We now need to do the same. You know, with Liverpool and Arsenal and Sat City all playing in Europe, you know, we, we have to go there with intentions. And I think a good win today, a big win today, will actually get, send us into the end games full of confidence with bad intentions. Um, so, you know, that's something that we need to do that Newcastle done last year is pick up some big results come the end of this campaign. What I would also say is where we need to learn lessons from that, Jack, is Newcastle, if anyone watched the documentary on Prime, there was an episode there and they, they spoke coming into this season. They said, look, statistically, you get double the amount of injuries when you're going into Europe because you're playing a lot more games and stuff like that. Um, and they didn't prepare properly for it. You know, Some would say they're restricted to what they could do in the transfer market. Fair enough, but we're not. So for me, we have to take lessons from that. We can't go into next season with a squad of 15, 16 players. You have to have a squad of 22 players that are absolutely hungry to go. And that's where we need to take the lessons. If we get Champions League football, go into this market with real gusto. Real gusto. Um, because injuries will happen next season. We are already bemoaning our look this season. Imagine what they're going to be like next season. They're going to stack up. So fill that squad out and learn the lesson. Well answered there, Davo. And uh, if anybody wants to give their thoughts on it in the chat, feel free to do so. But 
Um, I can mm -hmm. definitely see plenty of you would probably agree with me that there's weirdly kind of some similarities uh, actually yeah. between the teams at the moment. Ribsy85, though, is in the house. Good to see you, Ribsy. We're going to start with you first. Just have to read this lineup out. Not any or no changes, I believe, right, from the last game, unless yeah. I'm... Uh, un Benticore. Oh, Benticore is right, the one uh, change. He just had such a stellar last few games. I kind of wish that he mm -hmm. maybe started all the games of recent. We have Vicario in goals and in the picture for us all to see. Pedro Porro at right back, Romero at center back, joined by Van de Ven, and then Udoji keeping it down at left back. Bentoncourt, Basuma as the midfield deep pairing with Madison obviously playing as a higher number 10, and then Johnson on the right, Sonny through the middle, and Werner, Timo Wini. On the left, we have Austin uh, on the bench, Dragason as well, Royale, Davies, Hoiberg, Saar, LaCelso, Brian, Hill Messi is actually, I think, coming in probably just because Richarlison is uh, out for this one. And then Kulisevsky yet again on the bench there. Any just quick notes, probably, Dave, on the lineup? Probably Bentoncourt, right? Being trusted by uh, Ange Postacoglu. And I feel like you and I even spoke to that uh, with the members, actually, when you and I were talking about what lineup we might have expected. No, look, I think this was the change that we sort of said could happen, right? Sorry, sort of been off the boil the last few weeks. No, how much is that down to him, uh, you know, fasting, you know, same as Basuma and stuff like that, and heading to an away game. When you've got two players like that, you know, the, that are fast, and the pre-match meal is really important. You look at Mo Salah at Liverpool right now, you know, he's not at the same levels and stuff like that. Can't have an impact on performance. So I think the right move was made here, heading away to Newcastle, bringing Ben to Corey in. But also, let's not, let's not forget, right, the guy deserves it. What an impact off the bench last week. You know, for me, I think he is the best midfielder, picking up that ball deep, feeding it straight into the forward line every single time more of that from him today definitely definitely um ribsy 85 good so good to see you sir hopefully you're keeping well he says all right serious business now come on you spurs three points away let's go big up ribsy in there first as well the one and only the the mount rushmore of this up, uh, of this member group big up to you ribsy appreciate the support paul connor's in there too and he big says up, totally paul. agree with ribsy alexander Velares is in there come on you spurs let's go tottenham danny darko's in good to see you danny we also have nj123 big up to nj as well supporting martin knightsbridge the one and only afternoon boys up, early kickoff so early start to the weekend with three points is the right way to get the weekend started if you can get yeah. those three points that's the the risk of it martin or you know you end up you know having to watch everybody else for covering from an early morning get the, mar <laughs> get the margarita martin if if we win today oh maybe sangria in the morning el mcquad <laughs> pick up to you good to see you in the house level earth is in here as well gone's football and things and then dark sun g come on you spurs let's get our revenge with a 5-0 mm -hmm. win today he's also uh, on the double revenge here uh dave the the 4-1 didn't satisfy dark sun g and if uh, you notice my man we have vicario in the picture there think of the last time that we came up against this team the goalkeeper ended up abandoning us at halftime didn't want to take any more just gave up on the season gave up on this team and perhaps even the club I don't see that happening in Vicario. I see Vicario going 30 nil down, and he's probably even, you know, just even the Chelsea game, right? The way that he just stood up to the Chelsea players was like he would have been able to still keep playing. If we even had six players on the pitch, he still would have been mm -hmm. trying to make saves and take out players. The guy just has the right mentality, and it's good to see this man. I think uh, perhaps intentionally, Dark Sanji put on the, on the starting 11 photo there. Beautiful to see uh, Big Vic there. Uh, but Dave, five nil win. That seems to be enough for Dark Sun G to complete the revenge. Well, first of all, I think you're right with the intention of putting the Cario on there. <laughs> I think that's definitely intentional. But when it comes to five nil win, look, Dark Sun G, I agree with you. Today is about pride. You know, it is about trying to salvage some somewhat of our reputation back. You know, it's one thing doing at our home, but the real test is going up there and putting the hoodoo at you know right at St James's Park, where the event actually happened. Um. Look, what I will say is I do think we've got a great chance today. You've got half of the squad that don't really, you know, weren't really here for it, and the other half that were. So hopefully they all go out there with a with, with a, a point to prove today. But revenge is definitely on the cards for me. And um, you look at Newcastle, I'd argue they're probably weak right now. I think, you know, anything but a win today would be poor. Um, and there is a real opportunity for us to put some goals on the board. But that 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 does involve a Madison coming to the party today where he hasn't. That involves in the front three really sort of clicking today. And it also involves us getting sunny in front of goals with good goal scoring opportunities today but uh, look they do say revenge is their dish best served cold and it's a good job it's coming up to lunchtime because that's usually where you have your cold dish <laughs> nice cold uh, breakfast can be cold as well so maybe cold <laughs> breakfast with a cold lunch as well maybe that's what you can get with a 5-0 it's a, it's a double trouble uh, big up to you Dark Sun G hopefully you're keeping well 
I, I think actually the earlier ones for us, I would assume might be the better ones slightly for you, but you still have to yeah. always, uh, you know, put up with a lot to, to see these games. Big up to you, Dark Sunji. Hopefully you're keeping well, I imagine, this evening. Uh, and we also have <laughs> Shem Tan in the house. Uh, Sh- Jack and Dave, the best combo since Alder Vyrold and Vertongen or Keen and Defoe. Okay. Take your pick. Ooh, Dave, I think I would love to be Jermaine Defoe, to be fair. Look, I did idolise Robbie King growing up. So, I mean, that is probably a worthy, uh, worthy name for us, Jack. You know, I was thinking more along the likes of Bonnie and Clyde and, you know, people like that. But uh, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Romero van der Ven, maybe another one, you know. Uh, but, yeah, either or, we're yin and yang. Yeah, I think Mia probably had a spot, of, uh, spot on first, uh, <laughs> Shem Tan. Big up, though. Appreciate this one. I like how you put it, Shem Tan. I like how you put it. The diddler is in here Big as up, well. Shem. This is not the game to be asking for clean sheet, guys. Just happy to for a win. I agree. Agree with you there, the diddler. Adrian Troca is in here too. Big up to you, Adrian Troca. We also have Daniel Cohen. That's what's in the house. Jayco, big up to you, Jayco. Big up, Jack and Dave. I see Sonny with a hat trick and an assist. Four two Spurs. Lots of people are predicting lots of goals. And if they even dare to play a much higher line, I think against Sonny, uh, Jayco, I think he will eat it up, and I think he will take advantage mm-hmm. of it. He's had to play against pretty much five trees right in front of their goalkeeper, you know, for the past few games. It had felt a little bit bad for him. It just doesn't really, you know, suit his game as much if he's forced to play through the middle like that. But in this sort of game, if they dare play that higher line, I think he'll eat it up. Paul Connor in the house as well. Uh, he's saying we play far better against the top teams. I'm looking forward right. to our run in. We will be well up for it. And when stomping them down the road from uh, and we stopping them down uh, the road from winning the league, huge weekend as as per usual with these teams, because the closer and closer we get to the final games, you expect one of them to crack Paul Connor and one of them could even crack before they come up against us because we're going to be deciding their fate as well. Big up to you, Paul. Adrian Chia in the house. Greetings from the Basuma Third Kit Society. Come on, you Spurs. Adrian, I think the Basuma Third Kit Society could have a, a terrific redemption arc uh, today. I mean, Dave, right? I mean, it's uh, the third kit. We only see it so often. Basuma in the starting lineup as well. Who doesn't love to see it? I mean, we could uh, see a huge opportunity for the, the Third Kit Society. Have a turnaround. I'm wearing the sunny swimsuit uh, Third Kit Society. Uh, it's a very small, maybe, number of uh, fans who have this who have this kit. It's because it's... Uh, you know, definitely hard to rock, but I think that third kit from this year, it's a good looking kit. It's just, we haven't played as well in it. <laughs> no, look, you know, I, do you know, it goes back to uh, something that happened on the United with Sir Alex Ferguson, right? They used to play in gray kits. They had a gray kit at one stage. And I remember they got an eye expert in because United were having problems finding each other with passes and stuff when they were playing in that cap, kit, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, you won't basically said it's because it blends in too much with the colors in the crowd and stuff like that. And st- stuff so you know maybe there could be that sort of thing to it however jack we're going in here incognito tonight right or today you know at lunchtime going in here incognito you can't see us we're going to rock up and hopefully absolutely ball out um i'm it's a shame that kuliseski's not starting i am of the opinion kulu absolutely thrives playing in this kit so watch out for that if he gets off the bench but when it comes to basuma i know a lot of people may be nervous you know what to expect from basuma today i think he's been relatively okay the last few weeks so i don't get maybe a lot of the hype around them before that i would have but look for me i think he's doing his job all right at the minute and um hopefully we see a brilliant performance from him today that's right you've been a basuma defender uh, of recent mm-hmm. Dave. that's correct Gone some football and things has grabbed a membership. Thank you very much, sir. We do really appreciate it. You get extra content. You can hear Dave and I's ramblings before the games. You know, our pre-match anxieties where we do try to talk a bit about about Newcastle lineup, by the way, in it. Um, yeah, I think we got the lineup spot on. We had a, a good chat about Benton Core, so occasionally we actually can be right uh, going into the games. And if you ever do want to to hear us ever occasionally be right in our in our pre match thoughts, feel free to to check those out. Plenty of other content that does come your way as mm-hmm. well, and then it does help your name stick out, and it also is a great way to support the channel. Appreciate you, Gons, and football and things. Big up, Gons. Dark Sun G. Son Johnson, Timo goals incoming, lads. That Murphy ceremony last season still angers me the only players that played in that 6-1 loss are Sonny and Cootie um I think Pat Matasar the I think two featured for a little bit uh Dark Sunji if I remember he had to be taken off early and then there yeah. could have been Pedro Poro unless it was Emerson I'm trying to remember it wasn't Pedro Poro at least could have been on the bench maybe watching it from the sidelines I mean even Emerson on the bench would be foaming at the mouth uh, looking to try to get in this game to maybe plant one on Joe Linton or something like that. But um, Dark Sunji, I think a lot of these players, that any of them that are still left from it, 
should really still have that on the back of the mind. I said to Dave, as much as maybe the younger generation, they don't seem to I sound like Graham Sunis again, but they don't seem to really show it as much. I do think that, you know, if they have that sort of passion and they have that sort of competitiveness in that, uh, if they're strong competitors, I think they will show that, you know, the 4-1 wasn't enough for them. They're coming here to still do business. So big up to you, Dark Sunji. And he, he's seen Sonny Johnson and Timo goals. Look, I, I, I hope so. It'd be nice to see all three of them actually, you know, get involved today in one way or another, you know. Uh, for me, it's either been sort of one or the other, right? We haven't had all three really come to the party yet. And for me, no better time than today. And you know what? We, what happened at Newcastle last year? The likes of Werner and Johnson, you know, with a lot of sort of scrutiny surrounding them from the fan base, they might even do themselves a favour if they turn up tonight and we go and right some wrongs for last season. Um, so, look, I'm all for it. Let's wait and see what happens. I do fear that it's very one-dimensional, but this is where Madison needs to step up today. He can change that a little. So let's wait and see what happens. Definitely. Uh, Lazy Eight waking up this morning with a yawn. Big, big up, up to you, Nick. And um, See you soon, by the way. it's so early that the uh, the trucks right next to me uh, over at Steve's, uh, Nick, are uh, you know even still waking up. They're still sleeping uh, right next to me, and they're keeping their uh, their trucks nice and loud to keep themselves warm, as well as uh, probably the the food nice and cold. Big up to you, though, sir. And it's a very early one indeed. We only have had so many of these this season. I wonder if that will be uh, something we probably don't even have to do as much next season because when you end up being the um, kind of in those Champions League spots. You don't usually have to do it as much, so uh, hopefully not too many more. Big up to you, Wemberley, as well. Good to see Wemberley in the house. Hello, boys. The big fear, as always, is that Levy will leave us short on quality recruitment in the summer. Same old, same old. I think he was uh, very uh, nicely answering my question earlier, maybe, about the about the kind of connection between us and Newcastle, and I think that definitely is the uh, the elephant in the room always, uh, Wembley, Mr. Levy. And then King Hoddle's in the house, too. No problem with Benton Core starting. If we can dominate the middle through greater quality and technical ability, we should control the game. Yeah. Come on, you Spurs. I think we have we have as good of players, I think, in every position, if not better. And I think the front three is very solid for theirs. I think our midfield is better. I mean, Bruno Gamarish, I love. But apart from him, I think we have a better midfield. I think we probably do have a better front three, but it is very close, or at least, you know, two very good front mm-hmm. threes, and then by far much better defense and goalkeeper King Hoddle. So we should mm-hmm. at least uh, benefit from that. Uh, Georgie Hill's in the house. Big up, lads. Let's storm the castle and put the tune God. to the sword. Need <laughs> these three points on my birthday more than ever. Big up, Georgie Hill. Happy birthday to you, sir. And you've been Happy with birthday. us for plenty of years doing these watch alongs through the, the roller coasters. I think you've always still uh, showed up to most of the shows and put it a very positive message or at least a very, uh, you know, good summary of uh, where Spurs are at. So I appreciate you, George, throughout these years. And uh, yeah, happy birthday to you, sir. Enjoy your Saturday. Dark Sun G. Happy birthday. Newcastle downfall started with Tonali Ban because they spent the majority of their money on him, which would have been spent on two to three squad players. No Joe Linton as well. Mm. No, look, fair, fair, fair comment. Look, Tonali, you know, he, he got off to a very good start of the season. You know, Jack, you know how long I've been mentioning his name to you before he got to Newcastle. Um, glad we didn't uh, sink that deep into him now, you know, with what came down the road. But, you know, it definitely is a huge loss. Him and Gamera's brilliant in there. Um, you know, he's a he's a huge loss. You know, that guy is, I think, what we need in the midfield. Someone who can pick up the ball and spray it beyond, you know, the short passing and stuff like that. Have a different, give you a bit of a different dynamic from a deeper position. It's definitely hurt them in that regard. Um, no, John Linton today is huge, although he, I did believe he's on the verge of a new contract. And by the way, do you know what? Credit to that guy. He reinvented himself. He came here as a guy that was being mocked in the Premier League up front and has reinvented himself as almost like a Moussa Dembele, like midfielder. Um... So, so credit to John Linton, and thank God he's not playing today because we struggle against big, difficult, uh, big, physical, strong guys. Yeah, I think Dark Sun G is also relieved because he, even when he was playing poorly, he seemed to just still save his one good game of the season uh, against Spurs. I remember at those times, and yeah. I think that's why also Dark Sun G probably is relieved. And then Tonali, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's funny when you uh, end up putting all your when you end up betting all or maybe throwing all your money on one on one thing, it didn't turn out to to work out for them with uh, with Tonali, I guess some stage it might maybe he'll turn around but it's a, definitely a funny one dark sunji and uh i think they've had a crazy spiral of a season and i just hope none of that ends up happening to us next season i think there are a lot of lessons mm-hmm. to be learned from this newcastle team and then dark sunji also says 8 30 p.m kickoff today at, uh fyi uh blues and city 
at stupid o'clock for the future games. So he probably wished that maybe the Chelsea or the, the City game were maybe more of an 8.30 p.m. kickoff. But that actually sounds yeah. prime, Dave. That's more what you guys get. Yeah, no, look, I, like I said, you know, I don't understand how people can get up at 3, 4 in the morning and watch a game and then go about your day for the rest of the day and not be absolutely shattered. So, you know, I have absolutely huge respect for you guys for that. Um, you know, if Dark Sung G gets to enjoy, I suppose, my pleasure in life, right? <laughs> Sitting there in the evening when everything's closed, you know, and you get to sit there and watch football. Yeah, it's cold Coke, you know, maybe a nice uh, takeout yeah. as well, you know, nice afterwards. Nice little Jack. Yeah, especially at... Especially, I think, you know, um, in Korea, you know, to Dark Sunji, I just feel like there would be plenty of good takeout, you know, around as well. You know, good late night bites, mm -hmm. uh, too. So it's just much, much better than probably stupid o'clock than what you're used to, sir. Big up, uh, Dark Sunji. And then also Shamu Van Wu is in the house as well. Uh, Lazy Shamu. Eight says, good morning to the ghost face killer and Raekwon Chef of Spurs YouTube. I think actually Ghost um, is still, you know, I think was still even paler than a ghost uh, this morning, Lazy Eight. So uh, that's how I probably see it. But I appreciate uh, the, you know, appreciate it. But even better, like I said, I like how you put it, Lazy Eight. I like the new nicknames we're getting. I think still mm. Mia has it the most accurate. But I'm liking these ones a little bit more. Big up to the Alaskan Hotspur. Big up to the Rhythmic big Renegade. Up. Mark is in here. Member of the Mark Army. Big T is in the house as well. Good, uh, big up to you, Big T. A regular gamer. Jazzy Fusion. Ed M. Draw kick your teacher. Had my alarm set for 6.15 a.m. Yeah, it's a... It's a, it's a I think okay. Texas... I, I liked Texas for that reason, the drop kick your teacher. It's only one hour behind the East Coast. It's slightly worse, but you still don't have it as bad as the West Coast. So that's what I liked about mm. Texas, drop kick your teacher. And then Adrian Chia says... Um, important to shut uh, Izak and Gordon out else, uh, or else they will hurt us. I mean, obviously, they have been having, you know, kind of a, a very injury-prone season, uh, this Newcastle team day. But those two guys have stood out and have carried them, even when they mm -hmm. have had kind of, you know, semblances of a squad or, you know, haven't even had their strongest mm -hmm. squad. When those two are together, they do know how to play together. Look, Anthony Gordon, I'll give it to him. You know, he's they, my biggest problem when Spurs were linked with him is it was his end product, but he is sort of, you know, starting to get that. The guy works incredibly hard, you know, and that alone, and that industrious nature alone, can create chances. You know, put you under pressure in terms of being in possession and stuff like that. I don't know why. Well, I was saying to Jack coming into this game, I actually have a sinking feeling about the battle between him and Poro today. You know, they're both hotheads, both can be aggressive, and I think it could be a flashpoint there today. When it comes to Isaac, I really like this guy. I think he's got it all as a striker, can compete in the air, can run in behind, can run at you, can link up, you know, and he's got a good finish. Um, I, I'm actually excited that Spurs were linked with him. And, um, you know, Newcastle do have to sell a star player to do to give themselves a bit of a bit more manoeuvre uh, in terms of, you know, being able to spend and stuff like that. So if you want to go and take advantage of it which is what we've been building up for i think now's the time to strike really like them we've got to shut these two guys out today shut them out i think we'll have a good day All right. spot on adrian big up adrian and uh like I said, Basuma Third Kid Society really could have an exceptional turnaround today, and that's what we always wanted mm. to see. And uh, and Shawnee Maddox is also joining us nice and early this morning. He's like in my Watch kit. Shani. I've gone with the Sunny Third Kid Society from last season, the Swimsuit Society, if anybody's a part of it. Big up to you, Shawnee Maddox. Four Earth Below is in here as well. Big up to you. Uh, we have the Belgian Hotspur, the one and only Belgian Hotspur. Uh, Skunky Works is in here too. Big up to you, Skunky Works. Darren uh, Fearon is in here too. Big up to you, Darren. Joff Totten, Perth, uh, out in Perth. Big up to you. Bob Down Under, Mamadou, Cooley Sexy Football. And then we also have uh, coming in late in here. Big up to you, Danny Coys. Always making the time for us. Appreciate you, sir. He's saying need players to refine their form today. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Harris Army. Apart from Basuma, who I've mentioned probably a few times, Dave, who do you else do you think could refine their form today? Madison has to be Madison for me. You know, I do sit here and moan about the front line, but I don't think they're being helped by someone like Madison. For me, it'd be a good idea for Madison to, uh, you know, find his form, especially if he wants to make that plan in the Euro with the likes of, you know, even Cole Palmer now coming to the mix alongside Ford and alongside Bellingham. People are praising Manu nonstop this season. Them squad, uh, that squad is getting uh, limited numbers in there. So for me, I think it'd be a good idea for Madison to start performing. Yeah, um, you could also think um, some. Other players like um, probably 
Pat Mat or Kulusevsky if he gets the chance, maybe mm-hmm. uh, Danny Coyce. I was going to mention Sonny, but I think like at the end of the day, you look at his numbers from the season, we all know he's going to come back at some stage. So mm-hmm. I think you don't really need to put that much pressure on the guy. He already puts mm-hmm. enough on himself, but he also mm-hmm. has had maybe a tougher time in recent games. Sonny as well, I could think mm-hmm. of him if he wanted to have a hat trick to get back to the shape of things. But mm-hmm. yeah, Basuma, some of the players in midfield, Madison. Madison for me, for sure. I think that's a good shout from Dave. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, as, Just- yeah, yeah. Just quickly, the Owlad says, hello, boys, it's going to be a classic. I'm going 3-2 to the Spurs. Come on. <laughs> oh, look, I'd absolutely love it. I think a lot of people are predicting goals today, now, so we'll wait and see what happens there. Also, just quickly want to say a welcome in to Brian Dempsey. As always, good to see you, my man. And um, who else have we got here? Just make sure we're not missing them because we're about to get underway. Ed M, great to see you. Lee Neri, Scooter Reacts. Al Ben, always good to see you, my man. Big yourself up. And then Dan Coy says, knee players. Oh, yeah, to refine their form. Spot on, Danny. And then we also have Iceman. Man, always good to see you remember for eight months no need to put any words in here just showing love and support to dave and jack they deserve every penny they get smash the like uh best content come on you spurs first Love of all ice, big man. up ice man really appreciate that please do let me know how your son's getting on as well in his football journey um look really appreciate it my man and look we'll we're blessed with the support that you guys throw behind us and hopefully today's another one of them days right we get the win and uh, we can all sit here and have a big love party after the game. That'll be ideal. Big up, Ice Man. What a legend. Absolute legend. Really appreciate it, my friend. And um, thanks for supporting the channel for as long as you have. Thanks for being a part of the, the fantasy as well, promoting that. Thanks for just uh, mm-hmm. be, as well being a good member of this community, my friend. And um, we're about to get things kicked off. If you can for us, everybody, nearly 300 in the house. If you could smash Whoa. the like button for us. There's only 68 likes that I can uh, be able to see. So if you can't smash the like button for us, that'd be great. Getting these watch alongs started. Like I usually say, plenty of places to go, but it seems like plenty of you guys do like to choose us as your destination. We go through plenty of roller coasters with this team, but we do appreciate you guys. And uh, big up to Fat Tony, 4 a.m. in Washington. We never sleep. Wow. Big up to you, Fat. That's where I'm from as well. Um, I had to go through it. <laughs> I had to go through it plenty of times, uh, Mr. Tony. Big thankfully, up, bad. Thankfully, you know the one benefit of New York is uh, definitely much better start times. Big up to you, sir. But we're thank about you to get everybody off for here. tuning in today, though. Absolute Oop. legends. Thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in today. Do you know what? It is a roller coaster this season, and hopefully, we're on one of them highs today. I'm absolutely pumped. Big game in terms of Champions League football. You know, this is what we live for. Big games, things on the line. Let's bloody go. Oh, false kickoff. Referee already stamping his authority on the game. Oh. Get my cards out. I'm gonna have to. That's yellow. Already a yellow for Mr. Robinson. They've caught both of us out. They've caught both uh, clocks out. <laughs> Don't Here know what to do with Werner. ourselves. <laughs> Jacob Murphy playing at right back. Werner better expose that today. Basuma on the ball. Starting nice and fast here. Adoji into Madison. Madison chops it back into Adoji. Adoji does very well there to get it out. Madison, Madison outside the foot. The boot cross. Unlucky. Bentico picks it up. Has a smash. Oh. Block. This is a good start from Tottenham. Very good start. I think next year we should go a green kit and learn to blend in with the pitch. <laughs> Do you know them people that Down sit the there line. with the bushes over them and scare people? And go into a game like that. Vicario. They tried to play good Isaac down the line. But Van de Van is going to probably be winning that battle most times. Isaac, though, mm. does have some pace. He does. He does. We got the Belgian Hotspur 4 2 1 Dave. If it comes in, 50% goes to the channel. Whoa. Honestly, my man, if it comes in, Save get it for yourself, yourself my man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> get something for yourself, you know. Treat yourself, my man. And uh, really appreciate the uh, you know, the the idea behind it and the thought behind it. But you know what? It's the weekend, my man. You know, go and get yourself a Chinese, you know, a kebab or yeah. I don't know what you like to eat, you know, but uh get treat yourself, brother. You're already really nice to us as well in the comments, the Belgian yeah. Hotspur. I think uh, you know you He gives great support, by the way, to every channel. He's all yeah. over it. A lot of you guys do. I don't actually yeah. know where you guys get the time in the day, to be brutally honest. Save some time for your uh save some save some money for <laughs> yourself, my friend, and um Get yourself a nice, if you if you partake in the beer, nice Chimay. You know, I know that's a, a good Belgian beer. The Ch- La Chouf as well is very nice. Plenty of good ones. Um, Newcastle, though, intercept. I forget who that it's was, though. He was trying to play that ball. Bentoncourt. Bentoncourt. Oh, he gets beat oh, he out gets for pace by Gordon. by Gordon as well. Across the box. Well done, Poro. Oof. Well read, Pedro Poro. Well Bentoncourt done. Bentoncourt having to go through, going through the run. He lost the ball and then got done by Gordon on the outside. Yeah, he got beat for pace easily there by Gordon. It's another cross into the box. No. It's a free header. 
Elliot or that Elliot Anderson, I think, with the header and it's blocked. Ah, oh, corner for for Newcastle. Pedro Porro got the block on it. That's two bits good defending from the in the opening minutes from Pedro. That caught us out here on the counter. Pedrito. Eddie Howe taking a sup of water. He might need it. Just clear this. Looks like there's a good swirl on that wind there, the way the shorts and the jerseys are blowing a bit. <laughs> it's a short corner. Anderson gets the cross in. It's blocked. It's gone out for another corner. I don't know why Newcastle are doing short corners. I mean, we throw it in the box. We don't know how to jump. We've got concrete boots on. Just do not go down. Just please do not concede so early. I beg you. The Premier League would love this. Ooh, nice juke. Gordon. The outswinger. It's cleared. Come on, get on it now. Sonny getting the pressure on. It's good work right there by Sonny. Force Newcastle all the way back. Ooh, now Timo Burnham as well. Now trying to get the press on. Oh. Gone for the orange boots, Timo. Doji. Yeah, not a lot of composure there. Maybe he didn't get a lot of sh any shout. He's covering down Poro's side as well. Oh, good strength. Him. There we are. Good strength. Sir! That's my big dog. That's my dog. Come on, Adoji. The doggy or whatever you want to pronounce. Anyone is he giving a foul or is he just giving... Um... It's goal kick. Wow, I mean, he touched it. <laughs> we'll take it. Who was the referee today? Did Dark Sanji give you any stats on the ref? Yeah, so Tim Robinson, we've won one and lost twice. They were both against Wolves and Stuart Atwell, I believe. Um, <laughs> we don't want him against Wolves. <laughs> I don't the... believe we've got a good uh, record with Atwell. Actually, no, I think they did. Uh, it's kind of in between. No, I don't think we do have a good record with Atwell. I can't remember correctly on Atwell. Down the line. Oh, well done, Timo. Abs oh, oh burn. burn him again. Uh, no, fast that's pass sloppy. from Basuma. Wins out, though. Well Wait, done, no, Basuma. Bitch. Further, go! Yes, go well done, Timo. Ref, keep going. Ref, ref, ref. Oh, I keep stopping, Timo. Oh. Just keep going, man. Keep going. Could have also beat him the first time. He could have kept going. Yeah. Ben Tackers onto a doji. Newcastle trying to get a bit of a press on here. They ain't sitting back whatsoever. Onto Romero. You're right, though, Jack. Werner just has to forget about the referee and keep blood play to the whistle, isn't it? Look at Sonny... He had to run there. Werner. Big up to DJ Samuel as well. I'm not sure if we said hello to him. Big up to DJ. Hopefully he's all Big right. Big up DJ. Where's DJ AK too? Speaking of DJs. <laughs> Tottenham. Trying to get back in possession here. Johnson. Johnson. Good touch. Basuma under pressure. It's going to be a difficult game for Johnson, you know, because Dan Byrne has the physicality all day. Yeah, so definitely. it'll be interesting where the physicality rules uh, rules over pace or pace rules over physicality there. Might have to use his brain a bit more in terms of mm. positioning. Well done, Doji. That's great, turn and run. Keep going, Byrne, Doji. It on to Keep going. People need to get in the box. It's corner Byrne kick. Come on, corner. Spurs. This great is rom bomb time. It's rom bomb time. It's ticking. Come on, Romius. <laughs> or Jack CDV Belter. Um, <laughs> he can leather it two times like that. <laughs> in, Over in a row. That'd be incredible. <laughs> I Vice loved that. Kick. I loved that uh, tweet for Billy. You know, none of this PC nonsense. Just leather it. <laughs> you know, that was terrific. <laughs> that was terrific. Um, That's a short corner by Tottenham. James Young. Oh! Good ball. The header oh, Timo! Corner. Unlucky he gun out to win the header. I think he's looking for handball there. Basuma. Oh, that's just a sub by Basuma. We'll take it. We'll take it. Slows it down. Hopefully there's nothing. Yeah, no no yellow, hopefully. Hopefully not. If it is, the referee's not. Oh, good ball in behind. Vicario. Wow, good touch. Good conversation on him today, actually. Good question on him, Jacko, and the team today by you. Oh, terrific touch. Oh, that's sexy. You've done that. Pedro Coro or Bentoncourt. Yeah, it was Bentoncourt. Bentoncourt. Johnson. Class. Johnson. Oh, great oh, ball. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Jesus Christ. No one's gone up to Scotland for fuck's sake. How has he missed that? I think he that's overran it. I think he overran it because I don't, you can't really blame the ball here. I think he overruns it. He overruns it. Oh, Lord. He's giving he that the glass Because it. it's behind him now, Dave. Look at it. It's like behind him now. Yeah. He, sh he just overran it. Timo. Oh. 
For anyone that doesn't know, I think that one's gone all the way out past the stadium, straight into Glasgow. Yeah, it might hit Chris. Um, <laughs> Chris Sutton. <laughs> where, where's our boy Chris in Newcastle? Yeah. Hopefully he can look out. Protect your windows, Chris. Uh, big up, Chris. Got a super chat there from Coys Forever. Big up, Charlie, I believe. that is that. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. But says, you all right, lads? Need Spurs to not ruin my weekend. Come on, you Spurs. No, you're absolutely spot on, lad. Uh, just look, we're, we're, do, we're looking all right at the minute. I, th I think we should win today. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Um, <clears throat> so, look, we're starting off all right. Ferner with a big chance there. Yeah. But I think we'll create more. We're looking all right at the minute, my man. But, uh, yeah, I'm good. And hopefully Tottenham don't ruin my weekend either because it's my niece's <laughs> birthday tomorrow. So, um, you know, I can't wait to go over there and see her. And I'd rather go over there in a good mood than a bad mood, right? Yeah. Everyone wants to start the weekend in a happy, clapping mood, coys forever. That's the right way to, to get it going, and a Spurs win easily does that. And um, as well, like Dave and Dark Sun G have on their mind, a bit of revenge, too, you know, against this team. Oh, Doji, Great win from Doji though, here, coys forever. Madison. Just a second. Madison. Lovely. Sunny. Back. Oh, Basuma. Someone tell man on. Yeah, oh, to they're transitioning here, right. coys. It's four on four here. If you can get that ball over Romero. Win that, Romero. It's on two. Well done. Who was that? Harry Barnes. Pedro Barnes Poro up. and... But yeah, well done, boys Poro. forever. That's three bits good defending from him early on. They've heard us on the counter a few times, Newcastle. I think we can expect that. But we are we are breaking them down at the moment. Still plenty of game mm. to be left uh, to be played, though. And we'll see how this game unfolds. Mm. Big up to you, though, sir. And yeah, we're doing just okay this morning. Can imagine if it's going to ruin our weekend. Jack's weekend has only started. It's early hours for him. If it's we a, lose the today, definition of just again. starting. It's the definition of just starting. Coys forever. Big up, you. <laughs> Big up, sir. Big up, Coys forever. Appreciate the support. Anthony Gordon here with the corner. What way is he going to do? He's giving the thumbs up to the referee there. Loves him. Delivers it in. It's a good ball. Oh, That's no. Free header. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who's that? Is that looked dangerous. Basuma. What defending by Basuma on Bruno Gonamara's there. Very dangerous. That dropped right in front of the six-yard box, right in front of Vicario. I think it was about three yards out. It's a free header there from, uh, I think, uh, Dan Byrne. That's absolutely... Oh, it's that handball from Basuma, but he also gets it cleared as well. Let's see if I check this. That's brilliant play from Basuma. Alert there. Last week, people criticised him for not being alert in that area. Today, he's learning. You want Vic also as well to hopefully be a bit more yeah. commanding from these. But like we said, it's his... Oh, so another header, header one. Harvey Barnes. I was saying, Jack, we need to get Vicario over here to Ireland and get him a, you know, into Gaelic football for a month. <laughs> We need to have him just train with Burnley, for, uh, like Sean Dyche's Burnley for, you know, yeah. uh, for five weeks and then have him do a study abroad. Um, yeah. That was lazy from a doji, by the way. He just let Barnes jump, didn't challenge him. That's the one concerning thing is I remember, yeah, we've seen players like Alex Scott, you know, get free headers against this team, you know, from yeah. like set pieces. How's Harvey Barnes winning headers? Yeah, it's like pieces. similar for me. It's like, how is he just rising up and... It's like that midfielder that scored for Wolves there last time out from the mid, or was it Fulham? One or two. I remember Bournemouth. I was losing my mind in that game, you know, without. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Keith Moore. Remember him up front against the Sun <laughs> Lord. Newcastle just finding their rhythm a bit here. We're yeah. allowing them to settle. We're coming out of the game a little here. He'd get back on the ball, work harder out of possession as well, I'd argue. Ball at Barnes' feet. He's going to look to play in behind Poro. Good defending. He started off well, Poro, actually. Level Earth uh, says Newcastle were already 3 0 up at this stage. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so far, it's an improvement. <laughs> Big up, mate. Oh, great, great tackle again by Basuma. He's doing well. He started off this game well. Big back to Vicario. Don't go inside. Don't. Got away with that one there. Elliot on the press. Tottenham need to wake up here a bit in possession, Jacko. Yeah, not getting out of our half as easily as we were earlier. Basuma and Poro have started well, but it's more the defensive duties that they started well in rather than us, you know, talking about us being in possession here. Vicario goes long. Newcastle get the full press on the goal kick. I don't know why he's going long to Timo Werner. Van de well, Van. Van de well Van. done. Udoji to Timo. Back to Mickey. Calm this now. Calm it down. 
Just keep it until they're pressured for carry on. Romero. They're doing a mixture of the both at the moment. They're just playing against us very hard out of possession, Newcastle. They just are really working hard for each other. Carrio oh, goes long ball. here. Almost to Sonny. Can we pick up this second ball here? Good well touch, done. Bentancourt. Oh, my oh. Lord, what a touch afterwards. Even better touch afterwards. Madison. It's like Billy Elliott. Get turned, man. He's brilliant. See Bentancourt. See him. Open up your eyes. Madison, will you move it quicker? Yeah, open your eyes, man. Jesus Christ, he needs to scan the pitch. It's a joke. Just move it. You should already know where you want to pass it. Madison is kind of like me as... Oh, good idea, team, man. Oh, Lord. Madison's like me as a server where I would pretend to look into, you know, the for anybody, but, you know, it always accidentally, you know, never see anybody raising their hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, go on, dig it out. Oh, ref, go away. Al Ben oh. says, this is why we cannot sign Werner uh, if we are trying to get anywhere. 95% of decent forwards in the Prem uh, would score that chance. Yeah, Al, I think, I mean, Dave and I, as much as I think we've probably, I, I think Dave has, you know, been very fair with Werner. I think at first he had a lot of doubts. I think Werner sort of mm -hmm. answered some of them, but he hasn't answered all of them. And I think that's a... Um, mm. I think that's what we've maintained so far. I think we're not also trying to be dicks to Timo. I think oh. we. Oh, I don't think we've tried to be dicks though to Timo. I think we've appreciated what he has contributed for mm. us this season. Like he's been a successful loan. I'm not sure if he would be a successful permanent mm. signing at the end of the day. And he has mm. helped get his career sort of in a two degree back on track uh, with this loan spell. But that doesn't mean then we need to sign him on a permanent. And moments like that, mm. I agree with you, are kind of why. A lot of people are skeptical about him because he just mm. he's guaranteed to miss sitters like that. Yeah. Gordon with the in swinger, it's to the back post. Vicario does brilliantly there. Wow, brilliant from Vicario. Just quickly, Albert. Oh, the guy on here runs out his box there, getting excited. It's a free kick to Tottenham though. But Albert, look, when it comes to Werner, look, I'll be. I had already preconceived notions of Werner coming in here. I didn't I didn't think he was going to last be good enough. One thing I'm going to give the guy credit for is he is improving in the crossing department. But I agree with you when it comes to finishing. It's always been my concern. The wingers have to be able to score goals in the modern day and age as well as assist them. And I actually said in my predicted lineup with Werner, he's finishing his off and he, a chance could come his way today and that could be the difference between three points and he has to take it. You know, when you're coming up against games next year, if, you know, we get injuries and he's signed and he starts or whatever against a man City and it's a title game or whatever, that chance falls to him. He has to learn to take it. And I think that's where my doubts come in i think you know he, he might do all right to get you there but when the moment arrives is where i'm a bit concerned with him but look let's wait and see what he does here for the rest of the game it's a good ball out to Werner. what a ball from what sunny timo it's absolutely <laughs> snipe sunny there <laughs> uh, he oh, was what a ball. i wish madison you know this what that ball that Sonny plays this is what we mean Matt madison could try more often ball, what a ridiculous son. ball how does he play the pass and block the shot that's incredible <laughs> he's offside <laughs> as well uh oh, yeah that that's stinky, actually a good shot from team out sunny yeah. does great defending there yeah but al ben i do i do take your point and i'm still weighing this one up myself and i think this is one i'm not really going to get too bogged down to it he's here now He's, you know, there's the transfer windows closed. Not more we can do. But I think come the end of the season, I'll sit back, go through his games and reanalyze it and see where we're at. I think the idea might be with the likes of Gil and all, ship them on and he might come in as your squad player. That's my hope. If we're relying on him to fire us to a title along with Johnson and Son, it's not going to happen. So let's wait and see. I just, yeah, lastly, Al, I just don't think he can hang his head in shame. I just also don't feel like he's solidified himself for me as like an obvious signing the way... Some people might feel like it's an obvious signing. It's just not mm -hmm. as obvious for me. Um, and But yeah, Timo has been effective for us, or at least he has helped. He's helped this season. He hasn't been useless, which... Uh, he's done more. He's, he's contributed more help than what I originally yeah, thought he and would. That's, that's where I just feel like, at the end of the day, I can be I can respect that. He's like running with the ball. Oh, he gets it out to half. dangerous the here. Around, it's a great block by... Come on, can we transition here? Johnson. Johnson picks it up. Good touch. Give it into give it into the middle of the move. Well done. Matt, behind him, but we'll take it. Another ball behind him. Why are we playing it behind Timo. people? Go on. Gives it on to Madison. You've demanded it. Do Bentancourt. something. Give into Madison. Madison. Great move. 
Madison, Madison lovely touch. Oh, Team oh, Lord. oh Lord. Oh, Ben, you're right. Sell him. <laughs> How's he missed that? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, Timo again. Two very good chances for Timo. Oh, teeny weeny. He could be tuning it up right now. Oh, he could easily have taken off the speedo at this stage with a brace. He's six yards out. He scuffed it. He didn't even get it on target. He sent it out to the corner flag. We could have seen Dave on the dance floor twice. Oh, I'll Ben, I take it all back. <laughs> oh, lovely from Madison. This is oh, much here we go. better. Adorji, play him. There, and oh, a it's sunny. A shit, oh, it's a bloody shit decision. She played a guy in front of you. Yeah, he had guys down the down the wing. They don't always have to feed it into sun all the time. The option's not there. <laughs> the chat's gone mad. <laughs> Uh, they're not fans of her. No. Even I'm just like, what the god? <laughs> I've had enough. So <laughs> we don't own him yet. We don't own him yet. <laughs> I say we buy him and then immediately sell him uh, afterwards. Just turn an immediate profit on the, <laughs> on the player. Um, big up, Daniel Larson. Haven't seen you in the house for a while. Hopefully, you're keeping well, sir. <laughs> Level art. Sometimes I think Werner hates the goal. <laughs> uh, Newcastle playing it out from the back into Harry Barnes. Well done, Poro. He's actually had a very good start to this game. Go on, Johnson, run them. Oh, uh, yeah. Why is he going backwards? Oh, T oh, oh Pedro. Run him now. Dirty. Run him now. Run him now. Oh, keep going. God, keep so going. Slow. Lovely. Good ball to Madison. Great turn. Oh, unlucky. Box him in. Oh, Lord. Come on, Johnson. You're oh, pulling out now. Well done. Well won by... Who's that? Romero. Just strike one. Bentoncourt. Come on, Johnson. Get out wide. Bentoncourt's telling them, move. He's standing inside for. VVV. Tottenham with 69% possession. Doggy. We've got to turn this possession into a goal. Biss. And the Ven moves it on to Romero. That's it. Keep the tempo up, lads. Bentingor. Poro's not happy. He wanted that one. On to the big dog. Come on, Adoji. On to Timi. Tino Wino. Timi. <laughs> oh, oh, sir. <laughs> not getting anything from the ref don't you dare ref <laughs> don't you dare man. ref <laughs> just body checks gordon straight into the chest that's gonna hurt for gordon that's a sore one you know oh lord Werner. <laughs> madison thinks she's playing rugby for a brief minute or american football oh that was lovely tackle are you that's allowed it. them body checks in american football jack they pretty much allow anything in American football back in the day. I think they're starting to realize maybe they shouldn't have, but they're <laughs> they're starting to. I don't even know anymore what they what they allow and what they don't allow. But you definitely are allowed to hurt somebody. Should pad Madison up next time he's going to do that. That was beautiful on Shar. By the way, we can't allow him to strike from distance. He's got an incredible shot on him. Oh, I don't allow that to drop. It's more his that. passing range that I'm more afraid of. Oh, no, sorry. I meant Shar, not uh, Bruno. Yeah. Bruno, he has an all right shot. But yeah, with Bruno, it's more that guy that's mm. probably is the best vision usually of anybody on the pitch. Yeah. The Belgian Hotspur is still behind Timo. He says he's going to score today. Mark my words. <laughs> I think Dark Sun G also saw Timo goals. I said either Johnson or Timo to the members is going to score today. One of them is that Timo so far easily could have. Jeez, he's a, Timo could be on a hat trick. Easily. Look, the first one I'll give, right? You can eat. eat very easy to get them ones wrong at times. The second one from six yards out. Here we go. Barnes running at Pedro Porro, who's been brilliant so well far. Done, well Benton tracked back there by Benton Core. And Basuma. plays out to Basuma. Well, good Great pass, Basuma. Madison. Madison. Run the break. Do not slow it down. Play Werner. Referee, that's a yellow. a yellow. He's it's pulled a yellow. down the counter. Book it's Barnes it's right now. It's most obvious yellow. Is he not giving a yellow? Is he not oh giving a yellow? That's oh, my Lord. 
Oh, the agenda is so clear. The agenda is so clear. That is the most blatant yellow I've seen this season. That's the most obvious yellow I've seen this season. How is that not a yellow? Good to see our players remonstrating with the referee. Oh, my Lord. He's had two swipes at him. It's not open season, like. He's kicked at him as well, ref. He's right in front of your eyes. Jesus. We need to send them to, uh, to the opticians, I think, Jack. He no, may as well stick a jersey on no him. He's already got the socks, socks and, and shorts to match the Newcastle kit. Just give him a fucking jersey. Sonny, Sonny should not even try to... He's wasting breath by trying to talk. I'm just furious. And just, I mean, Sonny's wasting ba- breath by trying to talk to that thick skull of a ref. I mean, Jesus, man. That's right in front of your eyes. I think he wanted a breeder there, the referee. I think he had magpie for breakfast, clearly. <laughs> oh, good ball into Sonny. Oh, it's just under his feet. What can he do? Three Newcastle players straight swarming onto him. He fights car littered with brown ale. Smash him. Well done. Another good challenge by Poro. He's been brilliant down that right side. Jesus, that's like worse than some of the penalties we haven't been given. But like, this is where the referees need to get a grip of the game, right? You know, you give that yellow. Johnson just runs them all game. He can't make another challenge. It changes the game. We just want fairness. It's all we want. Instead of giving me all these new rules. Well done, and Madison. Well fairness. done. Go on, Verner. Madison on. now. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Can he win it again? Uh. That's ridiculous. That they get away with that. In, in, in around the penalty area. Well done, Basuma. Good tackle. He's had a good start to the game defensively as well. Him and Poro have been excellent defensively. Bentoncourt, I think, has been fine so far as well. It's good. He's been good as well, actually, Bentoncourt. Good. Do you know what? Madison start. is getting into the right positions. Much he's getting now. into the right positions. He's, get, he's, he's, he's waking up, Madison. I think he's definitely made a lot more influence now. Started some mm. good moves. Sonny putting pressure on pressure the back on line. Johnson, move your bloody ass. Fucking hell. He's as slow as a wet week, and you're about 50 yards off him. Just move. Run at him. Scare him. Show me that pace. Out of play. How is he 20 yards behind everybody else on the press? <sighs> Biss. Into Bentecourt. Mercedes Benton class. Back to Biss. Oh, lovely little faint there from Bentecourt. Oh, look at that. Oh, saucy feet. <laughs> On to Rom. Someone show for Rom. VDV, Van der Boom Boom. Mickey. Out wide to Timo. Oh, Werner, why are you coming back inside? Skin Mickey. him. You're playing against a fucking midfielder or a winger at right back. Someone show for Rom. He's looking. Too narrow. There we go. Good move by Benton Core. Johnson. Johnson. It's more like it. And he goes back. Mickey. BBB. Come on, Madison. Show for it. He's sitting in behind the midfielders. Make an angle. Oh, oh. Given away by Van de Van. Smash him. Uh, he, oh, he could have smashed he him there go. if he wanted to. He had to make that tackle. And he's getting that problem. If he pulls out a yellow card on Van de Ven, I'll scream. You Don't know he you will. Dare. You know he will. Don't you dare. You know he will. <laughs> you know he will. I'll just say, turn it off now. Oh. Uh, Van de Ven had to smash Gordon there. I don't know why you let him cut inside there. Werner done well to get back there as well. It was a combination of both of them. Van de Ven even tackling Romero. Fair play. Or, or Werner. Fair play. Has he pulled out the yellow? I think he might got away with this one. That's what? Oh, I love Tyler. I love Tyler. Tyler's is that even a foul? <laughs> so he wouldn't give Dan Burner talking to. He spent his time. Wait, he did give a yell. He has given. Oh my! Oh, oh, my, oh god. my god! This guy. Oh, no, this is. It's just. Oh, it's just playing against. It's just playing it's against. A proper agenda. If I'm Ange Postecoglou, I am flagging that in the post-match press conference. How does how Dan Burns just done the exact same thing? Dan He's Burns was more obvious. Danger. Dan Burns was more obvious. We had like a four on two. We had like a four on two when oh. Dan Burns did. And he did it in the middle of midfield. Oh, it's embarrassing. That's absurd. This is an agenda at this point. It's oh. actually an agenda. And he's booked the centre-back. He refused to book their defender. No, get away with it, mate. You know, 
let's go and have a magpie pie together after the game and some brown sure. fucking ale and he books our players these refs man it's like they are just it's like they're inbreeding with each other they're just so they're so dumb it's like they literally are sitting in their meetings and just hate Tottenham I'm sick of it now it gives Newcastle confidence now Van der Ven can't tackle for the rest of the bloody game Barnes, good, good block there, boy. He was that Destiny of Dozier. Uh, what's he doing over that side of the pitch? Referee's actually giving us something. Jesus Christ, someone check his temperature. He's nah, an embarrassment. I'm Daniel. I've been, I've been this way since the Liverpool game. I just felt that way. I just I knew that they just always were just going to be against us. And it's it's painful how obviously right that has become. They just have, ever That's since that Liverpool game, they have made it their mission to make every game so much yeah. harder for us. Yeah. It's an embarrassment. They don't even try and hide it at this point. That's what I don't... They don't even try and hide it. I'm not even kidding, Felix. They all look the same. They all have the thick skulls. Like, they all talk the same. You know, they all are bald. Like, I just am convinced that they all are just inbreeding with each other at this stage. Like, I'm just, I think they're all idiots. It's amazing. Probably have a dartboard with just all a Spurs crest on it the whole way around. Bloody joke. You know it's not a good game because no Newcastle fan has taken their shirt off yet. <laughs> Rombom. He's instructing people to move and they won't bloody move. Good ball. ball Sonny! Oh, not as good of a touch. He took it down. Thought it was a good touch. It wasn't. Oh. Good ball from Rom. It's a great move. It's a great ball. It's a great run. Everything was perfect. Just the final touch in that box. It's evading us every week. We could be about 4 0 up right now if we got it right. Good pressure, son. Newcastle, son. a bit of precarious. Come on, Johnson. Will you bloody move it? Why are you so slow? You're like you're running fucking quicksand. Oh, dangerous ball, Sonny. Sonny, Benticor, look at Werner, look at Werner. Madison, good to... Good oh. ball to Sonny. Sonny, get Oh, turned. Lord, they're getting each other's way. Sonny just New also has got to let that get turned. Man, can't tackle. Adore, you're going to have to make that tackle. You're going to have to make that tackle. Oh, no. Oh, Gordon, no. into Alexander Isaac. Isaac. Running oh, at Van der Ven. Van 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 and it's a finish. It's 1-0 Newcastle. Fuck's sake. And I'm sorry, but that's the referee. He booked Van der Ven knowing he can't make a challenge. He's the cause of that fucking goal. I'm sick of the refereeing decisions. If he's not on a yellow, he can go and get touched tight to and make that tackle. The referee, I'm blaming him for that. I'm not hearing anything else. It's a bloody joke of a decision. You're right. It's been made a lot harder for us in that, si in that situation, but... But Doji has to do better as well there, to be fair. But, I mean, you know, that's the, that, that's 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 the repercussions of the referee booking Van der Ven. He can't do that in there. He can't do that about it now. But Doji's got to do better, first of all. Please be off. Mm, oh, he's oh, on. I think he's on. Oh, I think so. <sighs> Doji's got to be stronger there. Good finish as well. Oh, I'm surprised you don't see the referee running over to celebrate when he's at fuck's sake, knee sliding into the celebration. He may as well, he may as well, he may as well. Oh no, oh no, Newcastle oh my up. lord, oh, what's my happened again? It's not even seen. Get we haven't been able Gordon. to see what's happened here. Oh, they were too busy showing the Isaac celebration, and they've shown back now, and it's straight away. It's 2-0 Newcastle. Do not tell me we're about to implode again here. 
Do not do this to us, Spurs. If this gets 3 4 nil by halftime, we're not doing this again, Jack. We're just turning it off at halftime. That's disgusting. Again, the referee's yellow card on Van der Ven has changed it. Let's see what happens here. Oh, it's Van der Ven back to Vicario. Vicario Charles goes clears. long. Johnson, Johnson pulled out of oh, that. Oh, Pedro Poro. Poor by Poro as well. Oh, Van der Ven Van again. Van slipped gets twice, gone. though. He slipped twice on both goals. Johnson needs to be so much stronger there. He's so far off it today. He's so far off the press, so far off getting involved. Uh, it's, a He's frightened with that it's a hospital pass from Poro, though, Dave. It's a terrible back. It is. It is, but it starts with Johnson not being in the correct position for the out ball. You know, at least go and challenge Dan Byrne. It's shocking from Pedro Poro. I get it. I do get I do it. Think it's Mickey Van de Van slips twice as well. Like, he's he, one on one in both situations. Oh. And he needs, it's like he needs to change his studs. It's like he needs to change his studs. He slipped twice now. This can't happen again. Not again. Do not capitulate. We have no answer to Newcastle's press. I think we've been caught out in two really bad moments there. I think we have created two oh. very... I think we created two or three good chances to score, actually. It's just, once again, getting punished for, for not finishing our chances. And then we've also had two very bad moments there. It does, does bring Hyla uh, Werner's question our uh, chances into... Uh, Correct. Yeah. Question a lot more now. Now they want to show a bit of intensity when we're 2 0 fucking down. <clears throat> well, since it's still only 8 a.m., I'm going to get a coffee. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Been here before. I think you might, think you might need an Irish coffee, Jack. <laughs> Maybe so. Werner onto a doji. We better score one before half time. Better score one before half time. I just can't believe it. Werner's missed chances. Defensively, I mean, the booking on Van de Ven was a disgrace. And then it all just unraveled from there. A doji needs to be better. Poros had a good start to the game. Shit with that. Come on, Madison, will you be stronger? We're just being bullied. Newcastle are pressing. The slides like in here again. I do not believe it. Van de Ven this time recovers. Holy fuck, they need to get something sorted out there. Oh, my God. That changing has just flipped the game on its head. That, that booking has just flipped the game on its head. We've lost our head since it. Isaac like tries to cut inside Van de Ven again. It's a Newcastle corner, and they've won every header from the corner kicks as well, so we better just defend this. I'm absolutely fuming. Weak, weak, weak mentality. Weak. It's a corner kick towards the back post. Newcastle players skewing up. 2-0 down. It's another bloody free header by Dan, for Dan Byrne. Gone over the bar. I mean, is anyone going to wake these fuckers up out there? Anybody? Hello? We're in the middle of a game. Could easily get pumped like we did last season if you do not wake up. Bloody embarrassment. Do not embarrass me again. Joke. I'm f I'll be fuming with some of these players after this game. Fuming if we do not pull this back. Can't keep relying on second half FC. Go and bloody score one in the first half. Get yourself back into it at least. Big Vic. Someone start moving out there and bring drag players all over the pitch. Stop bloody standing there like statues and garden ornaments. Cario goes long to Johnson again, and he's nowhere bloody near it. Someone wake that guy up. Can someone shake Johnson? It's Isaac. He's in for a third. It's blocked. It's defended by a doji. But guys, can someone shake Johnson and tell him he's actually at St. James's Park, 36 minutes in, and in the middle of a fucking football match? Please. That's twice Vicario's looked for him as an outball, and twice he's been caught sleeping. Holy bloody Jesus Christ. It's football. It's not rocket science. 
So another corner kick here to Newcastle. If they score again, if they if they even get a free header here, I'm going to lose it. Gordon with the corner. Oh, they're time wasting now too. Come on, ref. Gordon with the swinger towards the back post, and we actually win this header for once. James Madison wins it. What's he what's he doing up against Shar? I do not understand. Players looking at each other like, what's going on? What's going on is what happened last season. It's another corner kick. Referee, are you going to get them to actually get on with the game? We're going to allow them to time waste and high five each other on the way over. Fucking hell. It's an out swinger from Gordon. It's another one towards the back post. It's a free out. Well done, ref. He actually gives us something. Hooray. Stop dilly dallying and get on with it and show some bloody urgency, Romero. Oh, let's take 20 minutes over a kick while we're two down. Let's take 20 bloody minutes. Why not go and have tea and sambos? It's not fucking cricket. Oh, Lord. Someone give a carry on option, please. Son, oh no! Uh, I'm questioning why Son has to drop from the striker position out to right back to receive that ball. Why aren't other people moving? Can we please stop turning backwards and slowing it down? You're two 0 down. Any time today would be lovely. Did you get to some of these super chats, Dave? No, I was going to wait for you to come back. I was in the middle of ranting. Johnson again got caught out from another out ball from Vicario standing there having a sleep on the halfway line in his sleeping bag with a bloody pillow. So, no, we'll get on to them now. Now, Jack, now okay. you're back. Okay. Uh, Jerome, sorry about that. Jerome says, unbelievable. The replay was still on and they uh, effing score. Yeah, I didn't even see any of it, Jerome. Did that not happen last year as well, actually? I think it actually did happen last year at one it point as well. It probably is the case that uh, it's just Jerome. It's just really frustrating, man. I actually thought that we were, especially in the little beginning stage of that game, I think we created enough chances we're on top of them. Oh, my God. Getting this ref, jump, though, yeah. he's just got thrown to the ground. Another ball over the oh, top for Isaac. He's true. What a ball. It's a bad touch. Vicario does well there. Someone, he, that's three or four times now. Is anyone going to pick him up? Jerome, I just can't believe it, to be brutally honest, lad. I just can't believe it, Jerome. I don't even know what to say to you. I just don't know what to say, Jerome. Here's another one, man. I mean, any time it goes to replay, Jerome, it just keeps, it just keeps, it keeps going back to Newcastle, and then we're seeing an attack happening right in front of our doorstep. I can, I, I, I can see a Fulham and Brighton collapse like coming on here. We just do. We are so shook. We have no answer. All they're doing is pressing us high, forcing Vicario to go on a long we ball. We shake just ourselves, like though. Did. We shake ourselves. We just don't put away those chances, and then we concede something on a counterattack, and then we just end up completely mm. losing the run of ourselves. Just lost our head again. It's another Oh, my another God. Free header, free header every That's time. About six. That's about six now. Honestly, getting embarrassing. do we need to give these guys a pay rise to jump to win a header? The Alaskan Hotspur says the ref is shocking, makes it 12 versus 11 every game. Yeah. Uh, I've The Alaskan Hotspur, I think we've had a majority of the games good reason to probably be angry with the refs, but this one is really the definition of 12 against 11. Like Dave said, I think he made Mickey Van de Ven's job now pretty much impossible uh, for some of these counterattacks. He hasn't helped himself with some of the slips, but I do feel like it hasn't been made easy with oh Benji Corso! Right. He's got kicked in the face. Give you better give us a penalty. He's got kicked in the face, Timo. Oh. Where's VAR? It's denial of a goal scoring opportunity. He was in the box as well. At least it looked like it. Sonny, Madison. Madison! Saved. He had to have been in the box as well. Var check here would be lovely. He's got kicked in the face. That's a high boot. Great ball from Vicario. Very good ball. Very dangerous. Oh, please. Ah. I can tell. He might have made contact with the ball. I don't actually. think so. He might have made contact with the ball. Yeah. But yeah, look. Um, 
Again. Alaskan Hotspur, I did say that yellow card would have repercussions. You know, it's a joke of a decision. Dan Byrne, the exact same thing before that. He books Dan Byrne, it could be a different game. He lets him away, it gives him the talking to, ask him how his wife is, and then goes and books Van der Ven. Bloody disgusting. And it did have an effect on him for that goal uh, with Isaac. You know, he can't you he can't go make that challenge. It's a joke. Absolute joke, Alaskan Hotspur. You also have Adrian Chia says, did, uh, did say Isaac and Gordon hurt us, but we helped them. Absolutely spot on, my man. Absolutely spot on. Making their job easier, and uh, it's something Dave and I even spoke about as well, where they are probably the <laughs> two most dangerous players in this team, and we've just given them two very easy goals. Just the same exact goal we've given them twice uh, to those two players. Oh, no. And then also we have another one. Oh, no. No. Good defending. Who's that, Basuma? Then you have another one here. Al Ben saying we have to take our chances. We have to be more mentally strong. Whenever yeah. we feel like we are not getting the rub of the green, we capitulate. Al, I think that's yeah. absolutely just spot on in every way. I think we have had moments. We have had chances. And if we do take those chances, we find ourselves 1-0 and 2-0. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you're in a good position. It's hard to, I think, play the way that we have away from home where you're, you know, squandering chances. And then you're also inviting that pressure uh, on the counterattack. It's just not an easy way to play. You do have to take your chances. And then once we yeah. do concede, we do end up capitulating. We do, uh, we become a lot weaker. God, another it's header one. Header. We but do become then, a lot I'll weaker, man. It's, it's, we capitulate mm. from it. You're absolutely right. The moment something doesn't go our way or the moment that if we are not taking our chances and then we do get punished, we seem to really lose all confidence. Yeah. And I think that's probably where he was highlighting maybe with his super chat earlier on about Werner. You know, and that's where I do share the concerns as well. You know, if people look at my predicted lineup, I said it about Werner. Could come today where he could chance could fault him and he has to take it. And he hasn't today. You know, he's let us down in that regard. Um Oh, it's just frustrating. And uh, by the way, when's Johnson gonna turn up? Can someone tell me that too, by the way? Oh, so brilliant. Sure. <sighs> it's unbelievable. Um, but you're, you're you're right on in terms of Werner. But what I will say, at least he's got into them positions. I'm still waiting for the likes of Son and uh, um, uh, Johnson to wake up a little bit. But um, we have to take them chances, you're right, especially away from home, especially away from home, Al Ben. You've got to take them chances when they present themselves. I actually feel like Bentagor has had a terrific game from what I've seen. He's going to have to make. Yeah, he's going to have to get Kulu on at half time. He can't persist with Johnson against Stan Byrne. Well, just Johnson though doesn't doesn't even look like he's really up for it today either. I'm he's not, not offering even, anything. Yeah, not just, offering anything going forward or out of possession. Out of possession, he's fifty yards off Stan Byrne the whole time. Cario played two out balls to him. One that led to a goal, and the second one two minutes later after conceding the goal, you think B switched on, and he's still standing there asleep on the halfway line. Stan Byrne's getting there before him. He hasn't even reacted. You know, he's not doing anything. A couple more super chats there. We'll save them to the half time, guys. We're nearly there. We're nearly like, there. Yeah, it's half time now. Or no, they're giving two minutes added on. Please do send in your thoughts, though, guys. Um, questions, anything you want us to discuss. I'm, I'm angry. I'll probably a lot to say anyway, but uh, feel free, guys. You know, direct us. <sighs> I didn't have this in the script today. Nice, good pass. Basuma with a touch of a truck. Oh, I'm so angry. Well done, BD. Run it, Basuma. You've no option. Oh, come on, a bit of intensity. We're too fucking down. You're allowing them all to get back by doing so slow. That's better. Pedro. Good pass in a sunny. Gives away a foul. We need to get sunny out wide. No game for another two weeks. Do not do this again. Hmm. 
Ref, I mean, how long are you going to allow these to take over every set piece? Please do something. You allowed there them to kill 30 seconds there. Half time. Completely destroyed in that, sp in that span of time. And then all of a sudden, I think we really gave the game back to them because we just lose the lose all confidence. Even when we have gone one nil down and in other games, we have seen the team battle back that the way that they just handed the game back to Newcastle when they did create chances, when they did look like they, they could have been actually maybe the first team to go ahead really in this game. And we ended up getting punished for it. And then our heads really dropped afterwards. It's very frustrating. Paul Markey oh. here uh, from something from a lot earlier. He did say both wingers need to be binned. They are useless. We also need a number nine badly. Sun to the wing, Kulu on the other wing, and then Scarlet up front is what he wants to see at a uh, at halftime maybe break this down in two dave i mean you've been very frustrated with uh with johnson and then uh timo weenie he's gotten into good positions he's just yeah he's wasted the chances and then johnson that just hasn't really been at the office today i understand the point you make about sort of the physical thing between him and and dan burn i don't even know if he's really played well enough to give him that sort of kind of that excuse really i think he's just not up for it today it just doesn't look like he's really gotten off the bus really and uh anything could probably be be, uh, be better at this moment unless he uh if he doesn't turn it around but um timo weenie's gotten into good positions dave he just misses them and yeah both wingers useless to paul markey i mean look even if Werner takes one of them chances you're, t you're you're probably talking about a different game altogether probably sitting there having different conversations at half time and that's where the nuts and bolts of the whole conversation around Werner comes from yes he works hard yes he tries you know and stuff like that but the big moments away from home he's not the guy for me um johnson on the other hand look it's a hard one because he could easily spring into life in the second half but why does he need to be woken up at halftime from so strong words from a manager? Why is he not already coming into this game pumped up? Let's get this straight here. Newcastle are playing Dan Burns at bloody left back. He's capable, but Johnson should be running legs off him. He hasn't attacked him once. He's scared. He's shit scared of the guy. Shit scared of him. And they're playing J Jacob Murphy over at right back. That guy's a midfielder. He's an attacking player. He's not yeah. even a right back. I'm sorry, how we haven't exposed that yet is beyond me. They've rolled back out Emil Kraft, who plays about five games a fucking year. It's Newcastle's B-back line out there. It's a makeshift back line. And we have created absolutely fuck all apart from them Werner chances. Yes, Werner should have took them, but we need to create a lot more. I'm sorry as well, but Son needs to start getting in the game. Every time the ball comes into him, it's being dislodged. The ball that did come over the top, it's a shit touch. It's just a shit touch. I don't blame Sonny, uh, you know, per se, because actually everyone's looking for us to get Sonny on the ball and for him to go and take the game to Newcastle. But how about some of these other players start taking some responsibility? It's driving me absolutely insane. Forward line is not good enough. I'll be brutally honest, as crap as Kuliseski's been over the last few weeks, get him fucking on. Yeah, I think... Uh, I can't have that from Johnson. That's lazy in every aspect, Jack. Well, I just, I've been very impressed with him in recent games, and you can tell his performance today between the recent ones are just sort of night and day, and I actually think it's more down to really just a simple effort than it really is down mm -hmm. to him just being outclassed or something by Dan Byrne. I'm not really going to give Dan Byrne that credit yet. I do think it's maybe more having to do with just Johnson and his own willpower in this game, and I think it, sometimes what can happen with young players is, right, they start to have a few good games, then they kind of yeah, maybe they don't push themselves as much because they might they might start to think that their position is is kind of solidified or their position is kind of certain again. And I think that's what's happening here. Kulusevsky, we've seen it happen to him, seen it happen to plenty of players in this in, in this team. And it's why we need more competition. It's also why we need probably better quality amongst the wingers, too, because it would just push these players to uh, feel like, you know, that that type of performance just really isn't going to get you anywhere, really, uh, and you're going to get hauled off quite quickly. I do hope that uh, Ange does that, though. He's done it in other games where he threw Hoiberg, Bentoncourt straight on. I actually do hope that he throws in Kulusevsky or, or some other forward into the game straight away, technically as Brian Hill as well, uh, to work with if he even thinks yeah, it's that, that sort of desperate. I know he's not, but just to prove the point, you know, to the well, if he feels that way about, mm, you know, sort of standards and performances, true. he really should do that. No, true, true. I hear you on that. Look, what I would say is it the problem is with somebody, you know, not Son, take Son out of the equation, right? You know, you, but the likes of Vernon Johnson, they're just too unpredictable, right? When you play them, you don't know what you're going to get. And for me, 
that's where all the conversations come in. And for me, that's a huge problem. Make changes at halftime with this front line. They ain't going to just spark into life like that. Johnson ain't going to come to life in the second half. He is shit scared of Dan Burner. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm just fed up with that forward line. It's pissing me off all season, to be brutally honest, Jack. Yeah. Big up, Paul Markey, and uh, you hope to see quick changes from Boston Coglu. Martin Knightsbridge says Van De Van uh, didn't touch him. He just got uh, closed out. Um, is he speaking right, about maybe the, the yellow card? I think Tyler yeah. might have agreed with you, Martin Knightsbridge. He actually didn't think it was as much of a foul as it looked. I don't – if to me, it looked like a foul at least from one of them. One of them must have brought him down there. It's just the fact that the referee had brought out the yellow card there when – Clearly, Dan Burns was even more of a yellow card than that one is. If I think that one probably was as well. It did look like you know a decent opportunity for Newcastle. He was taken out there, but still, like even ours was much more of a clear cut chance. I think that was going to be made out of it, and it's just ridiculous that he hasn't uh, given them both a yellow card. And I think they would both be in uh, tricky situations right now. Even maybe Johnson uh, to give him an excuse would have an easier time probably against Dan Burns if he was on that yellow card uh, going into this. So very frustrating and. We've been here so many times here, Martin, that I've become almost practically numb to it. Get very frustrated by it in the moment, but then later on, I do get a little bit numb to it. It's just something that is hard for me to to really get that incensed about anymore because uh, the only player, the only man I really like is uh, Simon Hooper. That's the only guy that I can really say that's uh, ever there for us, and we had him in the last game. If only he could do all of our games. Dropkick your teacher says, why do we keep uh, playing it backwards when they're pressing us so aggressively? In Andrew's words, stop passing it back. Shake my head. Yeah, yeah, look, first of all, dropkick your teacher. I just want to say something quickly on Martin Knightsbridge team. Mm -hmm. Look, the referee ain't to blame for this whole collapse, you know. Unfortunately, if the players done their job, we could have exposed the referee at the end of the game and questioned certain decisions. Mm. But ultimately, the yellow card did change the course of the game. If he would have put down Burn, could have been a different story. Johnson could have ran at him all day without without him being able to tackle him. Unfortunately, he done it to Van der Ven, which was absolutely disgusting. And the players are letting are actually scapegoating the referee after this game because the manner of the levels of their performance. Drop kick your teacher. This is what frustrates me, man. I mean, we're two 0 down. You know, Romero's taking a turn. He overset piece. You know, players are starting to go backwards, sideways. You know what's annoying me? There's no bloody urgency. Drop kick your teacher. Two 0 down. You've got five minutes left in a half bloody go for it batter the door down and just start pumping balls in the box start taking shots absolutely batter the door down but we don't we slow it down pass it backwards pass it back inside and stuff like that look part of it does have to be with some of the movement but i've been i've seen some great runs there this evening just not being found and the problem is no one has their head up that's why no one has their head up. And that shows me that they're not confident out there today. No one is. They're being dragged down by what happened up there last year. They're being, you know, it's in the back of their minds. No one's playing with their head up. And everyone wants to play tippy-tappy. Start expanding the bloody play. You know, run that back line ragged. It's makeshift. It's absolutely shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I think Ange is just frustrated as well, though, in, in the manner in which we did also concede sort of on the counter. Also, the lack of sort of trying, the lack of uh, pushing, you know, from some of these players as well. Drop kick your teacher. Shawnee Maddox says, what changes do you want at halftime? The work rate is really low. I agree with Sean, Dave. It just, in a lot of players' cases, it does feel like it's sort of just kind of effort levels in the cases of, uh, of Johnson. We were saying that. And um, I think the midfield has actually stood out to a degree in the case of Bentagor, I think he's actually really been hard done by with some of the performances around him because I feel like he has been everywhere. He's looked good in possession. It's uh, it's really the forward line that's let them down. What changes would you uh, make at halftime? Madison had little bits and spells. wouldn't say he's still doing enough for me, but I do feel like he had little moments in, in the game where he did have good passages of play in creating chances. What do you think, Dave? What changes would you make to the forward line? Just Kulusevsky? Uh, I'll get Kulazeski on the, um, straight away. Problem is, we don't have anyone we can actually rely on that we know is going to come in and change the game. It's just guessing at this point. Look, for me, Kulazeski, I think, has to come in. You've got to wake that forward line up. You know, you want some sort of dramatic effect you got last week, you've got to make that change at halftime and hold Johnson off because you have to let him know that can't be good enough. You can't come into games, you know, with that weak mindset and stuff like that. Potentially, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Hoiberg and Sarr come on in that midfield and two of them be ripped off, to be brutally honest with you. Yeah, some changes are definitely probably going to be made by uh, uh, by Ann Shawnee. And, uh, he won't make a defensive change. He won't make one across the back line. No, he could look for maybe another more midfield ones kind of again. Um, I hope Bentagor again doesn't get taken off. I just feel like he hasn't done anything wrong in this game. Mm -hmm. um, you could look to take Basuma off again. Um, but if you want to get uh, Hoiberg in, it's just... 
yeah, how does Newcastle even play in the second half? Do they put more pressure on us or do they, you know, start to sit back and try to defend the lead? We'll see how they go about it. Big up Shawnee, though, and they definitely uh, have not stormed the castle today. Coys Forever yeah. says, would rather the police come arrest me for a dodgy fire stick so I didn't have to watch <laughs> this yeah. shite. It's uh, even yeah. harder to do the watch longs for it, Coys. Believe me that, because uh, when you're at home and you're watching Spurs play shit, right, you can kind of just go for a walk, go grab yourself a coffee, which uh, I was able to do at some stage, you know, during the during this thing. But you can't go get a beer or, you know, go have a, you know, a moment outside or whatever. Or just go complain to the missus for a few minutes. You know, you just have to sit there and face it. And I would say as, as fun as it is to do the watch alongs when, yeah, you're on top of the world and you're destroying teams. It's a lot lower, actually, when uh, when you are getting beat. I think we put up a good face about it, but it is it's not easy, really, actually. I wish sometimes I could just sort of go for a walk and uh, just go make myself, you know, kind of a, an egg or something like that. But you know, it's it's fun to do them with you guys. We get to ride the roller coasters all together. But yeah, believe me, times like this, it's just not fun to watch this team for sure. It's it's horrible. I just like where's the pride today? You know, no what happened there last season. Where's the pride? There is none. Bottle jobs today. Absolute bottle jobs. Ribsy eighty five member for thirty two months. Like I said in the beginning of the show, Ribsy, you are the, the Mount Rushmore of this channel, my man. And he says, uh, I've not, I've. Nothing, uh, I've not nothing nice to say. I've got nothing nice to say about the match, but love your work, lads. Another month down, Ribsy, sir. Appreciate you, my man. You've been here longer than me. I feel like you've almost been here even longer than Dave. Maybe you were here even before Dave even created the channel. That's how much you've supported us for this long, my friend. And it's also one that I feel bad for guys like Dark Sun G, like yourself. This is a much easier time to watch the game, right? I don't think it's too late or anything for you, right? You're not having to get up at stupid o'clock. And then this is probably a game that you wish was at 3 a.m. or at 4 a.m. Because then you could just go straight back to bed uh, type of game. And uh, Ribsy, though, appreciate you, sir. And I think that's how Dave and I feel. Really, it's not even one of those halves where we have any sort of good positives really to bring up. It's just one of those where, yeah, pretty much nothing nice to say uh, about this game so far. Anything to say to Ribsy, though, Dave? 32 months, fan show member. Yeah, look, I really appreciate it. I mean, that's nearly, what, three years? That's absolutely incredible. So fair play to you, Ribsy. Look, I don't even know what to say to you, my man. I mean, I thought the games like this and days like this were behind us. You know, I thought we were starting to show a bit more metal than usual. How wrong was I? Um, all we can hope for a second half turn, uh, FC turns up, Ribsy, but I wouldn't yeah. bank on it. Hard to bank on that one. Uh, big up, Ribsy, though, really. And uh, again, I wish I wish you used the milestone on uh, maybe after a win, my man. Appreciate you, though, yeah. sir. <laughs> Jerome says, Werner, absolutely crap. Basuma keeps getting bullied by Newcastle players. Absolutely fuming about those two. Two very stupid goals to concede. I think very stupid goals, Jerome. Basuma, for me, he's not been as good as he has in others. Werner, I think, really has shown kind of the, the element that probably hasn't exactly been brought up as much because he's been in a good spell of form this has always though been kind of the elephant in the room when it comes to his uh when it comes to his game and when it comes to his uh, mm -hmm. attributes is the finishing and is kind of the mischances and we are really paying the price for it i think in this game uh with Verner. of course we could do a better job like dave said of creating even more chances but still i think one of those should have gone into the back of the net you have a 1-0 lead there. It can be a very different game after that. It can start to, to ease and make the job a lot easier for us. And yeah. just Werner hasn't, and he hasn't done his job today. And uh, Basuma, I think in general, a lot of Spurs players have been getting bullied today. Uh, Jerome, for me, a lot of them have been uh, bullied. And then he also says Van de Ven got booked because he had said something to the ref. Well, if that's the case, Dave, that is kind of on Van de Ven. But, Jack, you're allowed to speak to the referee. You know, this is the team. Spurs players, and I've argued this all season, even Ange doesn't do it. No one gets onto the referee and helps them re-referee the games. It's something that's always happened in football. How comes referee allows every other player to speak to me? He allowed Dan Byrne to speak to him after that challenge, right? He allowed Dan Byrne to have a go at him. So, I mean, why is Van der Ven not allowed to question it? For me, look, depending on what he said, but I think you're allowed to remonstrate with the referee, to be brutally honest. And uh, the referee has no backbone. Get a backbone, you put... Well, I'm not, I'm not even going to keep going because he's just winding me up, the referee. I've got to stop for a minute. Uh, I know what you mean, though, Dave, but I, I have to slightly disagree. I feel like if Van de Ven did say something that in any way mm -hmm. could have, you know, you just don't need to run that risk at all, right? It, yeah, he could be allowing you to get away with something, so in a way you just shut, the, you just shut up and then uh, just move on. And uh, it is stupid that, uh, yeah, Dan Byrne probably did the exact same thing, gets away with it. Van de Ven does the same thing, mm -hmm. doesn't get away with it. But if that's the case, I don't have as much sympathy then for... For Van de Ven as much, uh, Jerome. Um, 
Paul Markey says, <clears throat> Johnson is not good enough. He's uh, he's windy and or, or he's windy and only plays in space. A pace, uh, a waste of 50 million. Sonny cannot play with his back to goal and Basuma off and Saar in. He wants to see Saar in. Johnson, man, I mean, listen, you can feel how you want to feel about him. I think he has been in a lot better uh, spell of form. He has more goals and assists than players like Luis Diaz, Martin Odegaard. Um, you know, plenty of decent players, Garnacho, plenty of decent players in this Premier League. I do think he can blow hot and cold, though. That has been a, a slight frustration with him this season. He hasn't shown, you would say, like that type of consistency that, you know, you would like, because especially when he started games, it's not been as great when he's actually come off the bench. That's where a lot of his goals and contributions have come from. But for me, I think he's still, you know, done a decent job this season. It's just one of those bad games. Again, he has had bad games though this season. Uh, don't get me wrong. Paul Markey mm-hmm. has had bad games and then he's, uh, wants to see Sar come into the game, Dave. Well, look, the inconsistency is a problem in itself. You know, don't get me wrong. He's contributed, but as many times as he's contributed, he hasn't contributed. Right. You know, so the inconsistency is a problem in itself that he needs to sort out. You can't come into games, you know, having an off day because you're feeling bad or whatever. Got to be better than that. I don't think we've any, made any substitutes at halftime either. Look, I think Sam might come into the game a bit later on. You might see Hoiberg. I think he's going to give these players five, ten minutes to see what they can do in the second half, see if they come out with a new attitude, um, my man. But, um... Look, I would like to see changes earlier on. I don't want to keep persisting with the same. We have to learn that they're pressing us, and we have to learn to deal with it. But Paul Markey, um, look, Sonny, as far as Sonny, I mean, look, I've made this argument all season. You know, he's done a job up there, fair play to the guy. But he doesn't have the answer to every situation we need, and he cannot play with his back to goal. And when teams sit back the way they do, you know, and play that defensive line, and when he's up against big centre-backs, you're playing to Son's weaknesses. Yeah. Um, but look, Richarlison's injured. What can we do? Daniel Larson saying Pierre Holme, uh, Hoiberg should have started today over Basuma. We have had we would have had better control in the midfield, and also Pierre's long passing would have helped. I can agree, disagree with Daniel. I've said before, Daniel. I think it only benefits Hoiberg more than it really benefits um, maybe just to win a game. I understand, but in the long run, we need to try to get the most out of Basuma. Mm-hmm. It's also though that like Hoiberg, if he's put under more pressure he can get caught out as well. I think when you give Pierre time on the ball, he can hurt you. Would Newcastle give him that time on the ball? I'm curious. Um, I'm not sure if they would have. So maybe some of his really good passing, we wouldn't see as much of the benefit of. I would say though, right, times when we have gone backwards, I'd agree with you. Like Hoiberg maybe more likely would have just tried to spray a pass somewhere, take more of a risk, you know, on it. So there is that to, to consider too. But Dave, I mean, he wanted Pierre to start today and probably a lot of people in hindsight would agree. No, look, look, I get it, right? But the thing is, Ange, Ange's vision is, is longer than just this season. You know, I think, you know, Tottenham of, of Hoiberg have had talks. I think they've made their intentions clear, you know, that they're going to part ways come the end of the season. So, but and speaking of which, you might actually see him come on now because Basuma's just been booked with a yellow card. So, uh, speaking of which, Daniel, you might actually get your wish. You might come in. <laughs> Basuma's already on the, the nasty tackles again here, Daniel. Um Listen, we know what Pierre can do. It's just I'm not sure if we would see the full impact of him in this game. Uh, I'm just not sure if it totally even suits him. Martin Knightsbridge saying, son playing with his back to goal. It's not his game. Just, we've said this till we've been blue in the face. Uh, Martin Knightsbridge, uh, me and Dave, I think we can put it a thousand different ways. It seems like yeah. a lot of people are starting to come come at least come to see how we have looked at it. It's actually no disrespect on son. He's not the He's not, I don't know, he's not, oh my lord. Oh lord, we got away with that one. He's not like prime R9 or something where he can, you know, hold up the play, run up defenders, get him behind. He has really good strengths to his game. I'd say he's damn near close to being a very good, complete player, but it's just, he's not exactly, in my opinion, a complete striker, you know, the typical number nine. He's not. I think he's always been much better as a winger. He has almost every asset, every attribute that you would want. As a winger, two-footed, really good finisher, knows how to run in behind, knows how to take on his man, can create goals for others as well. It's just when he has to play against, you know, big, tall center backs and really strong center backs and there's not that space in behind to work with, he can suffer. And I do also think just playing as a striker of recent, he has just kind of lost a bit of confidence in himself. And I feel bad for him because I just don't think it is always the best position for him. Certain games, maybe, but... Not always the you know the go-to position for him for me. 
Guys, look away now. Pedro Porro's coming off an Emerson strip ready to come on. So those of you who aren't Emerson. It's getting Emerson worse and worse. Fans, uh, you know, it's looking like it's, yeah, Jack said it. It's getting worse and worse. Look, Martin, like, you know, look, you know how long we've been banging on about it, my man. We Look, like Jack said, there's only some way you can keep repackaging something. I think we've come at it from every angle. We've been at this for a long time about Sonny not being the striker. Unfortunately, you've got guys that want Son to be that guy up front, that want him to be the face of the club. But you can be the face of the club without leading the line. Um, mm -hmm. But look... Look, like I said, there's only so many things, there's so many ways you can repackage something, right? We've tried our best. We've tried our best to talk about it. It's only when it comes to light after three games of evidence that people pick up on it. But me and Jack seen this coming a long time ago. Yeah, you can easily be the talisman on the wing. I definitely agree with that. Uh, sorry as well, everybody. We were trying to get through these and, you know, as quickly as it can. But Dave and I, yeah, Dave and I, we get emotional and we just want to have a good chat about them. Good chance, though, maybe for us. Hmm. See what we can do here. Oh, actually, nothing Pull comes from it. We'll crack on. So there's a couple Brett, of members chat. We'll get these yep. out of the way, and then we'll crack on with the Brett commentary. Brett, for 17 months as a fan show member, says, no guts, no hunger. Udoji out muscled by lightweight. Gordon summed up the half yeah. for me. I said this earlier, Brett. I feel like a lot of players have been uh, bullied. Johnson, you bring up Udoji there as an example. Someone brought up Basuma, too, got uh, bullied in this game. Just feels like Spurs just not up for it. Not up for this Newcastle this Newcastle hunger, this Newcastle drive that you bring up. Yeah, they don't want they don't want the fight. Not unless to say, Brett, you're absolutely spot on, lad. They do not want the fight. Verna cuts in, oh, someone pounce. Oh, you're spot you're right though, Brett. You know, they didn't want the fight. They shied away from it. Newcastle just pressed us and got physical and we didn't have the answers. You, I don't know what else to say. You're right. And then member for thirty months, Chris, just like Ribsy eighty five here, been with us, you know, since the day one. And uh, Chris, I wish again you didn't use this milestone on this sort of game here, sir. Good pass from Emerson. Mm -hmm. Sonny, hold it up. It's just not had. I told you, everybody's losing confidence, I think, playing. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's gotten him he's behind. He's uh, behind. It's 3 0 Newcastle. And that comes from Son. Exactly what people are talking about. Cannot play with his back to fucking goal. Oh, my Lord Jesus. If he loses the ball, and he done it against Luton, by the way. He lost the ball against Luton, and we conceded off the back of it. I don't care if you're asked to play up there and it's not suited to you. I don't care. Find a fucking way to do it, Sonny. I think he's just had poor touches, though, even. It's not even him getting bullied there. It's just also not a great touch. If you can see. It's just losing. No, it's not. But, you know, it's again, it's the physicality. It's, it's the exact same thing against Luton. Rinse and repeat. He got away with it against Luton. No one spoke about it because we won the game. But this is not the first time he's lost the ball there and it's cost us a goal. It's your captain. If your captain's doing that, you may as well give up today. It is furious, Chris. I'm sorry you're using these milestones on this, my friend. Appreciate you, sir. Big up, Chris. Good to see you, my man. I'm, if you were listening you earlier, we hope that that team out Verner shot didn't hit you in the back of the head. We're sorry that um, it's, again, it's another Newcastle embarrassment. I don't believe it. Al Ben says, could be a Fulham scene. Uh, it already is a Fulham, Al. Uh, could be a Fulham scene a fault. Once teams score, uh, we then get caught between worry about our own back line and continue to play our free attacking style. Once again, spot on there, Al Ben. Once again, I think this team does get caught in that mindset of they don't have confidence anymore in themselves and in the system and in the style of play. And then when you're caught in that sort of no man's land of playing slightly defensive but also supposed to be you know attacking and going forward and trying to get back in the game we just get punished even more actually uh, i totally agree with that but see that's the problem though they're not asked to be sitting back they're not asked to be defensive they're asked to go and play the one way it's been simplified for them let's not forget a lot of these guys complained about having to defend set pieces under conte because he's working on them but yet they're still conceded set pieces right you know how many times has conte and jose asked with some of these players i'm not asking them to do this you know, it's just inherent at Tottenham. I'm sick of it. Just do what the fucking manager asks you to do. It's not hard. And then uh, once again, sorry, everybody, that we didn't get to these quicker enough. It's my fault. Uh, just, you know, it's hard to make That's sense not, of it everyone's all. Everyone's angry. We're Hollywood angry. Hotspur says stupid o'clock here, but I hate to say it. Sonny has been awful. Hollywood, somebody has to watch the Spurs game. Usually at stupid o'clock. Looks like the people out in Washington and out in yeah, California, drink. everybody in Oregon has been watching this game at stupid o'clock today. Looks like the West Coasters have had to have it rough. And um, yeah, man, I just, it's been a tough game. Sonny, for me, it's just uh, Dave and I have said it. You know, it's just 
playing with his back to goal, it doesn't suit him. It's not one of those. It's not one of those positions where if you're playing against really tall, big strike uh, defenders, it's not really the one that that really suits you. Just a sec here, it couldn't be a handball. I mean, I don't really see how that is. He's got his arms behind his back. Um, it just doesn't really make sense to me. Um, him being always pushed to play at sort of a number nine, Hollywood Hotspur. I think he's much better as a winger. He has all the attributes that make sense as a winger. He's two-footed, can finish, run at you, create chances, great finisher, one of the best one-on-one finishers in the league. Just none of that really technically means that you should play as a number nine or a striker. Mm -hmm. Being a number nine or as a striker, there are other elements to it that I think we have forgotten as a fan base. Hold up play, being good in the air, having to bring others into play when you have two or three defenders all over you trying to win the ball off of you. There's just a lot of elements of a target man that Sonny just is, doesn't have because he's not, you know, he's only a human being. He's only one man. He can't be 30 different types of players. He already is a very good player. He just doesn't suit him. Just doesn't suit him this type of a, uh, this type of play. Well, look, this is something I tried to highlight in the summer. This is something I actually highlighted in the summer when it came to the discussions with Harry Kane, you know, there was a big push for Son to play down the middle and everyone goes, Oh, you know, he can carry the team. He's good enough to carry the team, whatever. He's a great player. He's world-class. He's fantastic. Right. But one thing he ain't is a striker. People will look at his stats and go, he's not producing the same numbers off the left because he's getting on in age and he can't play there anymore. Absolute horseshit. You know, there are a lot of them are the same people that had wanted to sell Harry Kane in the summer, you know, and stuff like that. It's absolute bullshit. Let's have real conversations, right? The reason why Sun's stats off the left aren't the same, the reason why Kulu's stats off the right aren't the same and stuff like that, is because we don't have a bloody proper striker up front. That's the problem. Relying on Timmy Vini out on the left side, Johnson, who doesn't know whether he wants to stay in bed or, or get out of and actually play a game, <laughs> and you're asking Sun to do something that he's he just can't do. His strength is not playing with his back to goal. We need to have proper conversations here. I get people wanted to sell Harry Kane for the money. Fine. But let's have a conversation about bringing in a real striker and let's stop pretending that Son is a natural out-and-out striker when he's been a left wing all his career. It's only Tottenham fans that will ignore 90% of the guy's career and just change it and go, he's a fucking striker. I'm sick of it. And then Martin Knightsbridge sort of agreeing with the same thing, saying, see, this is the difference of having uh, a proper striker. I think we'd be having a much better season, uh, Martin. We've already had a terrific season. We've already had a terrific season, but this season could have been even more ridiculous, could have even been more against what people had expected if we had kept in any way a proper striker or if we had actually gone for another t- uh, solid target, man. Almost 4-0 there. Look, we're trying the best we can without a proper target, man. It doesn't help the fact that Richardson's always injured as well, right? We're trying our best. But, my God, do we need to go and get a striker this this summer? We just have to. And it has to be quality. Three changes here. Sarah Hoiberg and Kulu all coming on. Vernon, get the fuck off the pitch. Go, go. You're right. You wear moon boots. Fuck off. Sauceberg coming on. Johnson, you can go back to sleep. Send him already on the bus. Get the bus to go home with him. I'm fed up with that idiot. And then who else is coming off? Okay, Bentecourt, he tried today. He tried. The other two can just go. Just just go and do something different. Go and play a game of Scrabble in the dressing room. Sun off. Not happy. Uh, he's been off it. Okay, so Vernon's staying on. That's pretty crazy. What? I would move Sonny what? out to the left if he's just unless he just thinks that Sonny's just lost all confidence or he doesn't think it's worth playing Sonny. He's a winger. Put him on the wing. Maybe he just thinks it's not. Maybe he's already given up, Ange. Maybe he's mm. already given up. Yeah. <sighs> Go forward, Madison. They're looking to get more now, Newcastle. Yeah, they're hungry. They want to do another six one. Oh, no. Gordon, or who's that? Gordon nearly in behind. It's the old lad in the chat saying, I think he's in here. Let me have a look. <sighs> what a 
embarrassment today. What an embarrassment. If they get a fourth track, we're just calling this a day. I'm not sitting here through this any longer. If they score four, I'm not doing another last year. It's frightening how far off it when we, we come into some big games. You know, Fulham a huge opportunity, way off it. Brighton, way off it. Today, way off it. It's frightening at times. I agree with King Hoddle in the chat. It's not even always he thinks Sonny's hold-up play today that's even let him down. I think it's just his touch was like the touch of a truck at times. Mm. It's like it's not even hold-up play or strength or anything. You need, to, you need to have a good first touch first. Um, yeah. I'd agree with that. And certain other players today, too, have also just had that kind of sloppiness to their game um, today. This is Newcastle. This is a makeshift Newcastle team. This is a, half of this is their B team. Martin Knightsbridge saying, agree with you boys, need to go all out and get a top number nine. Listen, Martin, I'm really glad that we've even kept one target man. I think a lot of Spurs fans wanted to sell every target man and every guy that could hold up the ball in this team this summer. And uh, I'm glad that at least we could have kept one of them with uh, Richarlison. But I agree with you. We do really need a top quality number nine, one that can hold up the ball, be good in the air against these type of teams, but also uh, score the chances that are created for them. We create so many chances, and we just need a good striker to put them away for us. The ref, though, has just let the uh, continue. This is what I mean playing against 12, though, where the referee is just watching us just getting kicked time over we're just getting kicked over and over and over and over and over again and he doesn't continue to make any sort of effort to maybe realize that one of these could be yellow or one of these he's going to have to actually stop because they're just uh, having fun just kicking us now good ball in behind play Werner. play scarlet oh my god selfish or johnson, johnson that's johnson it's i thought worse. he's oh on my god. how is he still he's on that's so selfish off. It's so selfish. Oh, please. I'm so, I'm so annoyed with Johnson today. He's got Kulu in behind. He's got Timo. Oh, oh my Lord, Lord, man. That's the time like we... You're treating him down, and this guy's worried about his own performance, getting on the score sheet to say it wasn't my fucking fault. Tree one down. Play the bloody pass. He's in. All you got to do is play it. It's not even that, though, Dave. Like, out of all the games that we shoot from outside the box, this is not the one. We're 3-0 down. Why are you shooting from outside the box in this game? Oh, it's embarrassing. Madison with a high boot. 3-1 down. You just got to feed them. Well, forget about your own ego and your own stats. Play them. Everything's just gone wrong today from start to finish. It's just been wrong. Oh, they want to look at that one, but we got one replay on the Bentecourt one earlier on. So if that's a yellow, what? Oh, I, I don't, don't get, I don't get the referee anymore. What's the point of them? I didn't even see the challenge. It looked like a bad challenge from uh, Madison. It looked like a bad challenge. How much more time are we going to allow these to waste as well? By the way, every set piece they're taking a turn over. And we'll probably get one minute injury time as well. Probably score two late goals, get one minute injury time when we're chasing it after all their time wasting. Ball behind. Down the right side here. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. This is embarrassing. Oh, my God. They are just walking through that back line. They are just walking through it. Will someone put your bloody on the line? How much are some of these guys on? I mean, I would put my body on the line for, you know, a thousand quid a week, not 50 grand a week. What a save. For if they're on 80 grand a week, they won't put the body on the line. Who, who was that defending there? That was just weak. Was that Sar? It's, it's three players. It was Sar, Emerson, one other as well, all got beat. Newcastle corner. Looks like another on, refund. Looks like game. another refund will be issued to the Spurs fans. Yeah. Clear it. Oh, oh my no. lord! No, nearly four nil. It was almost four nil earlier. It's nearly we four nil there too. We could be eight nil down right now. Actually, no, the amount of free headers chances they had, we could be eight nil down. That's shocking. If their again. shoot was better, we'd be the boot beat, beat demolished. I'd have to just cancel all watch alongs when it's Newcastle away from home. Mm. 
In fact, actually, we're not doing that next year. Because we continue to show up. We continue to show up. It just seems the past few years we haven't we haven't seen our team show up against Newcastle. Gordon. Johnson, stop looking to the referee and just stop concentrate being on the stop being a... Ref's not even going to help you anyway, so what's the point no. of it? Exactly. Spot on, Jack. Be a man and go and deal with the problem. Ah, uh, Van de oh, Ven's Lord, giving Van it away. Ven just giving it straight to Newcastle. They're in here again. Oh, no. How many more times are we going to allow them to dance around? Hmm. Paul Markey says those substitutions and positional changes are tactical bollocks. Uh, Basuma still on and Bentoncor off. Also, Ange is having a stinker. I'm yeah. the only one I could sort of explain is Sonny being taken off. I think might be for him preserving him for future games, right? Knowing that because so, we've no game in two weeks. I guess that's the only thing I can think of though is that maybe he doesn't want to risk he injury. Injured. I mean, these Newcastle players, Dave, are also kicking lumps out of us, so it could also Very be that. True. And he just doesn't see then the point of risking him, knowing yeah, that we are a much better team yeah. with Richarlison and Sonny together. We are a much I better guess what team. What you don't want is some being out long term for a not game, you know? Yeah, for nothing, you know, for ending, you know, for keeping him in a game that is ultimately over. And he also hasn't played well. So I think it's the combination yeah. of the two. He hasn't played well. Good ball. Kulu. He hasn't Lock played well. Corner. And if he were to get an injury, there would be, you know, kind of double, you know, double whammy with that one. The other well, look, ones, though, I agree with. I agree with Paul, though, Dave. The other ones, like guys like, um, who is it? Guys like Johnson and Verner still staying on the pitch. Like, you know, one of them could have been taken off. Just feels like certain players that have still remained on the pitch definitely shouldn't have. No, absolutely spot on. Look, the substitutions confuse me, to be brutally honest. Um, I don't understand why Bentecourt has come off, um, to be brutally honest with you. The Sun one, look, I guess we'll find out after the game. Like, there's no way all them journalists out there and that aren't going to question on them after the game. No way. So, we'll find out the answer to that after the game. And it could be maybe that you're correct there, Jack. You know, you've seen the game has gone and just sort of, you know, doesn't want to risk some being injured and stuff like that. Um, look, I'm just confused in general, Paul Markey, what's going on today. I just don't understand how you can come in with such a lackluster sort of mentality after being pumped up there at 6-1 last year. That alone, you shouldn't even need a team talk. You shouldn't need tactics. That alone should make you want to run the absolute nuts off yourself, win every battle, and go and sauce out on this pitch. But, you know, again, I just don't get it. Where's the pride? The whole day has been confusing. I just don't get it. I just don't get how you can rock up and allow this to happen again away from home. I just do not understand it. It's confusing. I mean, there's such thing as pride. Where's the pride in yourself? Fuck's sake. Johnson again? I don't care who played that. It's just shocking. It's just, again, these moves where we have three, four players. We got numbers here, and it's just so wasted by a terrible bit of quality. I suppose we'll have conversations after the game. I see half people blaming and some people blaming the players and stuff like that. You know, I suppose after the game, the people let us know where you are on all that sort of jazz. I don't think really anybody deserves much protection or no one yeah it's no just one not good enough all around. as much as i've even shown protection for sonny today you know playing in a position i don't think he's best at i still don't think he's even played well enough i think he still has had the touch of a truck and bad decisions and everyone's played terribly for the most part <laughs> What I don't understand, oh, my son, like, look, don't get me wrong, Look, I don't no. blame him. We're shoehorning him into a position he ain't, right? <laughs> it's just the little things, the ball over the top. How many times have we seen Stone pluck that out of the air and bury it? You know, touch yeah, bounces off and stuff like that. He's had the little game, moments where he's just then... Yeah. got picked off, they went up and scored. How has he not learned from that to say, okay, shield it this way, shield it that way? How do I protect myself a bit better? I just don't understand. I, I agree with that. That's where I'm kind of coming from. I just feel like... While I do think he's set up for failure to a degree, I do also, you know, he's had just bits of quality. His quality just hasn't been there. I know he can still be a much better player despite him playing in a position that isn't best for him. He's still playing a lot worse than I know he can. But we're just effectively taking him out of the game. He's our most creative player, our most consistent creative player. 
you know, when you're having trouble creating chances, surely you put your most creative player back into a position where he can affect the game and worry about taking them after you start creating them. For instance, so how many times have I said, get them back out of the way? If he had them two chances, I'd bring him back to the way. God, Vicario is so much better with his feet than any goalkeeper we've ever had. He's just received an absolute hospital pass. Oh, I just want this to end so I can go and chill out on the couch, cry and watch football for the rest of the day. I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm I don't sick even of know shit. how much post-match analysis I'm able to do. Um, you know, Twitter reacts anyway. I'm not doing the Twitter reacts off the back of this shit. <clears throat> Johnson Udoji Sikulu man pick your head up this is half the problem they just won't pick the head up oh, Madison Sloppy with a terrible Madison. touch Boyberg Udoji Madison Sikulu man Madison greedy, selfish greedy, fuck greedy again they, do you know what? They don't even want to be out there. What's the point? I asked, I'm pissed with every single there. player. I'm just pissed with every player on this team. Bar Vicario. Well, ben says keeping Werner on is uh, Son's mo in, uh, in Son's most effective position. Look, I don't even know how to keep saying the same sunny thing that I've been saying for the last months. I, I really don't. Look, if I, I do get the point Jack's making when it comes to maybe, you know, what Newcastle, big physical, referees letting them away with a lot, right? You know, do you want to risk that sort of long-term injury to someone? You know, if anyone's going to score against, you know, some of the games we've got coming up, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, you know, it's going to be sunny. You probably want to keep them for that. Here we go. It's blocked again. Um it does, it does, it almost, when you take them off, it almost does mean you're waving the white flag, though, Jack, right? Yeah, I agree. I just, that's the only thing, whether you agree with it or disagree really with it. There's no reason behind it. I just, I, some of the other, uh, other substitutions, I actually find it harder to explain for me, uh, Al Ben. Just taking off Sonny, the only thinking I can come up with is he just doesn't want him to pick up any injury or risk it at all. He just doesn't want to risk it at all, which means he's waving the white flag. And then I think he also feels like Sonny's not even played really well enough to warrant, you know, deserving staying on the pitch. I don't think Varner yeah. has either, to be honest. I don't think Varner has either. It's just those well, two, to, say, those two to combine together it. might be the reasoning. Like if you combine those two bits of logic together, that's probably what he's come up with is keep the donkey mm. on, you know, and, <laughs> sort of, you know, have Sonny take a risk and take him out of the firing line. And also, Sonny's just had a bad day at the office, just a bad day at the office. So just have mm -hmm. him have him sit with that, really. One thing, you know, coming up against these better teams over the next few weeks, it might actually highlight the real problem, which is that front line. Because, the, you know, that's where you need to be taking them chances when they present themselves. You know, the real good ones, you might get one or two a game. You've got to take them. And, you know, the next few games might expose that about us. You know, against the little teams, you know, you will get your moments and stuff like that. And, you know, nine times out of ten, you do punish them. But against the bigger teams, you won't get away with this. You just won't. <sighs> Newcastle with another free kick. Just going to pump this one into the box again, I presume. Paul Markey says, I'm off to the Leinster, Leicester game or Leinster game. Uh, Leinster game, the rugby game. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. I do not blame you, Paul. I don't even want to watch the last 20 minutes, but just because I love Tottenham, I just, I've nothing else to do. For, you know, I'll, I'll watch it anyway, but I don't blame you. Look, Paul Mark, you're probably summing up everyone else. Everyone else feels let down. They feel embarrassed again. You know, like Jack said, probably get another statement, you know, another refund. But what does that do? You know, go and do it on the football pitch. We keep talking about this. We do all these gestures off the pitch in the press conferences. I keep saying all the time, forget about that fluff. Do it where it matters. Do it when it bloody matters. We've made our job qualifying for Champions League so much harder now. Probably yeah. ruined it, to be brutally honest. Probably ruined it. Off the back of this, no one's expecting us to turn up against Arsenal and North London Derby, which is the next game. So to turn up to this game with a North London Derby off the back of it is even more embarrassing. Don't even know if I want to go to that game now. Although they might need the look of me. They might need the look of the Irish. <laughs> it's the problem. We don't have a good Irish man in the team. <laughs> Ref. I mean, 
they really are just allowed to just stomp on us like on every occasion like i swear mm. every pass we make every touch we make you'll just see a new castle player just step on top of somebody's foot or just run through the back of them and the referee just seems to have no issue with it and you know what? i feel I, like you know part of me wants to sit there jack when you bring that up and go but you know what? we've been here before and we've had these conversations you know if you ain't if, if the referee ain't gonna protect you you gotta go and protect yourself but you know what, I've had a thought about this sort of, you know, today silently in my head while speaking, which is great, by the way. You know, I could do two things at once. <laughs> but, you know, you sort of look back at it and go, I mean, do you blame the players in a regard? Because when they do try, the referee just books them. It's sort of unfair in that way. I think you know, it gets you really... You can get away with it. We do it once, we get booked. I think it becomes really mentally taxing. Mm. I think it's hard to... I think, yes, yeah, certain games, you should do that. You should rise above it. You've even seen me. I've risen above it in certain games. Yes, I've complained, but times when I just, at the end of the day, we'll just see past it because I'm like, you know what? We've been here so many times, just have to see past it. Today's just mm. one of those where, I don't know, maybe just because we're already losing, you know, there's nothing else for really me to talk about or say. It is something that is still just very annoying and very just mentally taxing, I feel like, to deal with, even mm. as a fan. It's just always these referees just never making life easier for us this season. No. Yeah. But I don't know. It's you just call, also it's also just it me being a petulant. It's also just me being petulant at this stage. I just don't really I don't think so, that Jack. You called it straight away on the watch wrong when it happened with Liverpool, you know. You watch us get screwed for the rest of the season. You said it. Since then you know we've had what, one penalty awarded all season when we arguably we could have had a lot It was more. a penalty also that didn't matter. We were already like three nil up or something when we were given you that know, penalty. <laughs> <laughs> they sent Romero off for a challenge, but let Forrest away with the exact same thing. You know what I mean? So you look at it. We have been under... We we have, like, you know, we're not making it up. And we're not making excuses either. Like, don't get me wrong. Some of the performance, especially like today, hasn't been good enough. You know, you can't excuse the ref for that. But with the decisions and stuff like that, it does help alter games a little. Oh, it certainly does. Like it, certainly said, though, back and it certainly fucks with you up there because you're like, I can't do anything about it at this point. We haven't helped ourselves, though, by Timo Werner just... Again, I just I think today's performance also really a lot of it really does fall on Timo Werner. I think because he had really good chances. Because if we go, the game. I just think if you go up that early with the momentum that we already had going into this game, I do think this becomes a very different fixture for yeah. for both teams. And Timo Werner has hurt us for that reason. No, I agree with you. You know, he could he could have painted a very different tale today. Could have painted a very different tale today. Um, and the drop kicker teacher says even Luton scored four here. No excuses. No, no excuses at all. Drop kicker teacher. Plenty no. of teams have. Everybody's capable of beating each other in the Premier League, but believe me, none of this is at all excusable, or none of this is no, at all. It's not explainable. Even shouldn't even have to be explainable. It just should be unacceptable. Look, one thing you won't see is 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 me or Jack really excusing it. You know, even when things have been going good at times, we've been saying, hang on, we need to look at this. This could come back and haunt us down the line. You don't need to tell us about making excuses because that's one thing we will we will not do. I do think, though, what, you know, when we do have these conversations about the ref, like they, you know, I, I'm like, you know, yeah. you have to have them discussions. It is a part of it, but, you know, it's not it's nowhere near the whole reason. Don't get me wrong. Dropkick your teacher, though. Texas, at this time, at this, uh, God, I would love to be where you are. I mean, if it's a nice sunny day after this game, get some barbecue, nice round of golf, um, take your mind off of things, have a beer. Texas would be a lovely place to take my mind off of things after a game like this, I'll tell you that. But instead, I have to listen to trucks outside of a grocery store and sirens and, <laughs> you know, uh, but I look forward to taking our mind off of this one it's just it sucks though to start the weekend this way and also just having to then like dave brought up earlier to take this two-week break until the next game as well which is a huge game coming up after this one it's not easy it's definitely not easy and uh it's similar to fulham very similar to fulham and it's, a, it's really identical really this one hurts me more than brighton and fulham though yeah, well, that's this probably because to we're reaching towards that stage of the season where it starts to hurt more and more of these type of performances. And then also it's um, a team it's that we've had this happen before. Game. We've had this happen before. So it is, yeah. it's very frustrating. Sorry. Emerson. Hoiberg. 
If we if we keep passing it backwards when we're 3 0 down, I'm gonna go mad. What have you got to lose at this point? You may as well go for it. You may as well lose 6 0 if you're gonna lose 3 0, for fuck's sake. Could already be 6 0 down. Don't worry about possession now. Just go and fucking bang on the door and get shots off. Nothing to lose. If you're not gonna do it when you're nothing to lose, you're not gonna do it anytime. Start screaming for it there. Not happy. Hoiberg. Out to Werner. Oh, my Lord. Oh, it's embarrassing. Newcastle on the breakout. They're going for four here. Timo Livramento. It's a good ball across. Isaac just couldn't get on the end of it. Right across our six-yard box. Isaac picks it back up. Dancing around players here. Unchallenged. I'm just so good. I'm so annoyed with Tottenham. I changed what I said earlier. Just give us one minute stoppage time and blow it up. Ten minutes left to enjoy this shit. Super chat from Martin Knightsbridge. He says, sideways and backwards passing, no speed or imagination when running off the ball and making spaces and moving the opposition around is too slow. And that, I think, is absolutely spot on. I couldn't agree more. Actually, I have nothing to add. You've actually summed it up perfectly there, Martin. Summed it up perfectly. Not enough movement, not enough, you know... Just wanted dead. to try things, not enough gusto about us, not enough purpose. You know, we spoke about moving things. How many times have we had conversations at halftime this season about the ball being moved too slow? And then in the second half, you see it moved a lot more quicker. We just haven't oh seen Lord. that today. Newcastle nearly made it four. Who's that craft? That would have been an insult to injury if he scored. Comes off the it's, post. It's just dead movement and dead imagination yeah. from the players martin i think dave is right you really did describe it perfectly there it's just so dead from all of them i mean it's getting bad when you're bringing on the south so it's just this is another player though that i just don't really feel like it's like hoiberg that i just don't really care for no. i feel like i'd much rather just maybe it's harsh to put on a kid though to put kids on in games like this actually maybe it is better just to put in a professional who is paid you know yeah. hundreds of thousands a week people saying madison boot off I wouldn't know. I think I've muted the, the I'm commentary. Assume there are people watching with Coventry. Or Coventry, sorry, not Coventry. I wouldn't mind going and watching Coventry at this fucking point. <laughs> that guy had you right, that American guy. He's on fire for them. Great ball from Hoiberg. It's that easy. It's all you got to do. Great ball. It's all you got to do to cause trouble. Just be brave, play a pass. Great ball. It's sad that players on the way out the door showing players what are going to be here next year how to do it. If anything, I'd expect half of the performance we've seen some from some people there from Hoiberg if he's leaving. Dan Coys, man, you're you're welcome to go. <laughs> he's saying, when was the last shot oh. on target? Only staying here to still support the channel. I appreciate Honestly, so many people. So many people that have said that in the chat. I actually really appreciate that. Like even people have said. You know, Dave's commentary, always still 10 out of 10. I, I appreciate you guys all saying stuff like that, but believe oh, me, dear. this Thank is you. painful. This is like, if you guys, seriously, so many of you guys, it's, well, way too generous to even still be watching us at this stage. <laughs> like, I don't even know if we make sense anymore at this stage of the game. Like, we're just trying Honestly, to get Honestly, being brutally honest, guys, don't feel like you have to stay here and support your boys. I appreciate it. You know, it's ride or die. I absolutely love that mentality that we've got going on here with each other. But I ain't going to hold you to this. You yeah. know, if you want to go off no and do prisoners. other things, if you want to, you know, if you've got family, you know, stuff like that, don't. Just go and do something else. Because be yeah. brutally honest, I'm just seeing out the rest of this game because we sort of have to, yeah. you know. I don't I don't even want to be here too long after the game. Probably have discussions, you know, with people that do want to hang around. Tell us what you want us to address and stuff like that. No problem. But don't feel like, you know, I appreciate the loyalty, you know, but don't feel like you have to stay here. Like, if you want to go, go. You're a, legend, Dan. To anyone's head. It's You're a legend, shit today. You're a legend, Dan Coys. Make yourself some breakfast, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pick up, Dan. 
And then uh, Patrick McCory, big up Patrick, really appreciate you, sir, Patrick. And he says, THFC making shit clubs look like Barcelona since 1882. Um, it's very Spursy today, Patrick. Very, very Spursy today. And we, this season, have actually played better against the, the top six or the traditional kind of top six teams. We put in our best performances this season against them. Yeah. This is um, one that I can't even really explain, though, because Newcastle, I wouldn't say, are a bad team at all. Um, it's just another very, very weak, very spineless kind of performance from some players. I wouldn't even know if spineless is the right word. It's just so many of them just not up for it, showing no real competitive urge, no real urgency about their game, especially when they did go down. And they really do know how to drop their heads. They love dropping their heads once the game kind of goes against them. And it's uh, it's been happening a few times this season. It's still a young team, though, and I think yeah. we've still had a great season. Don't get me wrong. It's just that we have had these sort of embarrassing type games before. It's been hard. It's been definitely hard. He's offside. He's got to be off. Timo Werner, though, man. There's he, no he way. Why didn't he just boots. hit it? Just hit it. He must be wearing Dyer's moon boots. It's the only logical conclusion I can come to. He must be wearing, wearing Dyer's moon head is what he's wearing. He must yeah. be wearing cinder blocks. You know, walking around. Why with is he taking a, <laughs> taking a touch? Taking a touch. Oh, uh, Patrick, um, what does make my life at least a... a what is the silver lining, though, in all of that, Patrick, is probably Barcelona have been actually weirdly sh more shit than us in the last uh, year and a half. So at least that makes me feel a bit better. Um, they've also been making shit clubs um, look like prime Barcelona. So at least there's that. Mm, uh, <sighs> it's, just, it's, it's just concerning. I'll be brutally honest. I know Tottenham have a weak you know, mentality at times. I did not see this coming today. No. I really didn't see this happening back to back on away games against Newcastle. It's just unheard of. But then again, Tottenham do do the unprecedented, all the wrong ways, right? All the wrong unprecedented that we don't want. Um, I did ask a question in the pre-match build-up. You know, will this game dictate what level of competition in Europe we play? You know, or almost derail the Champions League sort of, you know, hopes. You know, a bit like what it did last season, right? It derailed our European hopes. Sadly, oh, here we go. Oh, my Lord. Oh, just missed. Sadly, it seems like that's going to be the case. I just thought, look, like Jack said, we do, we do perform better against the big teams, almost because they show us no respect, right? But I don't know, man. I'm concerned about the next three games, to be brutally yeah. honest with you, Patrick. I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm not filled with like, confidence. Like, I know the North London Derby's coming up, but that should have been even more point to prove today that we're going to come in here, smash them, head into that North London Derby with full of confidence, ready to go. When you've got a North London Derby coming up, and you know that, and it's at home, by the way, it's unforgivable to sink in that. Absolutely unforgivable. Uh, I just don't think it's looking good. I don't think it's looking good. I love the name, though, Patrick. Patrick McCrory, very nice name. Yeah, McCrory's on a great, great second name. Sounds like a golfer. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like... <laughs> Great name, Patrick. Great, na great name, Pat. Oh my God! <laughs> Fuck's sake! How they've won every oh, header today? Sorry, they've man. won every header today. Please put me out my misery. I actually think Ryan Mason mm -hmm. needs to be even looked at, honestly, as the set piece coach because this is absurd. Is he not even having them practice headers? They none of them want to rise for it. Like they're all absolute wimps when it comes to rising for a header. They're all pathetic. I can't believe it. It's like the Bournemouth game again, where at least we won that game. But that was also a concerning game where no one wants to win a header. No one. Everybody so stands. Everybody's a such a wimp in the air. He's throwing through the air like a rocket. Oh, my God. He's just gliding through the air unchallenged. It's un... How? Fuck's sake, man. I mean, you saw that one coming, too. I mean, that's actually... It's that's crazy we haven't... They've actually... They should have scored two or three more of those. I'm actually ridiculous. It's amazing I'm getting pissed now because they should you know have scored two or three more of those. They don't want to put their body on the line and get hurt. You get hurt going for headers. It's that simple. You get hurt. They don't want to do it. They don't want to take the pain. Too cozy in Hotspur away. Absolute cowards, actually. We are cowards in the cowardice. air. We are cowards it's in the air. great cowardice today. Guys, we've got a couple of Super Chats there. We will bring them up at the end of the show after we've had a bit of a rant to swell after what's going on. Um, just bear with us. Bear with us. Spurs fans leaving by the looks of things. I don't blame them, you know. I would have left out. And it's sad, actually. It's sad because a lot of them had to leave early last year there as well. 
Do you know what? It just shows a complete and utter disrespect towards the fans, actually. Complete and utter disrespect. That should have been first and foremost on the mind, actually. Before we spoke about anything, that should have been first and foremost. Let's not have to give a refund to the away fans again today. Now they're bringing on kids. This is embarrassing. They're bringing on... A... Oh. Bring on Matt kids Ritchie. And Matt That's Ritchie. more that embarrassing. That guy hasn't played in about 30 years. More embarrassing that they're bringing on Matt Ritchie. He's like their Mark Noble, but worse. I don't know how much longer I can take this pain, Jack. I don't even know if I have four minutes in me. <laughs> oh, if I don't laugh, I'm going to cry. I think I need to go on a big, long walk. I need to just get my, my anger out. I'm absolutely fuming. I need a long walk. Hmm. I slag other clubs about getting sponsored by Kleenex. I'd take a Kleenex sponsorship right now. Four fucking nil. I'd take an Advil sponsorship. I just don't believe it. Take a Tylenol sponsorship for this team. This is just... Just don't even... If they give nine minutes, they just want to... They just want to add an insult to injury. Oh. All the laughing emojis in the chat laughing at us. And we deserve it. I mean, we deserve it. This is not the way my weekend was supposed to go. Yeah. I'm still annoyed at some of the decision making at 3 0 down, though. You know, players up to shoot when you can slide people in and stuff like that. Oh, that was probably even more infuriating was times when we were already were down and beaten, and then these, these guys started acting selfish. Oh, five minutes injury time. Come on. Please. Why are you doing this to us? If we were winning, if, if, if Newcastle, if this was a tight game, they would have given it one minute. If we were 4-0 up, they would have blown it right at 90. That's like sadistic, that making us sit through five more minutes of this. Yeah, for what as well? It was only four goals. It's only two in the second half. Well, the referee did take an attorney to ask, uh, you know, Burns in the first half, how his whole, how his whole month has been, how the <laughs> wife is, how the kids are. Never thought I'd give up on the weekend at half two on a Saturday. Usually I'm just getting primed. Here we go, cinder blocks. That's what we're going to call him from now on, cinder blocks. Today he was tiny, Timo. Yeah. Uh. Bailey B, this performance is pathetic. Imagine us in Europe playing this way, and any Spurs fan who wants Ferner signed is totally deluded. I mean, listen, there are plenty of <laughs> deluded uh, fans out there, uh, us included, I think, especially me, Bailey B. So, uh, you know, I will be often one of those deluded fans. When it comes to Timo, though, uh, I'm kind of with you, man. I just don't really... I'm not as sold on him as others were. Like, even when I was kind of showing him a bit of praise or a bit of respect for what he has done for us this season. By no means was I really jumping on the train of signing him totally permanently. That's just because I think he's not really someone that's of the real quality that we actually need. I don't think he deserves a ton of hate or a ton of disrespect or anything because he has chipped in this season. Just doesn't mean, though, that he needs to be bought permanently. I think um, those two things can exist. He can have an okay loan spell. He can help us out. He can chip in, kind of sort of do what he was brought in to do as a loanee. But other than that, like, it doesn't mean that you need to sign in permanently. And today, I think we really lost this game. 
for a large part due to him and not um, mm-hmm. not bearing his chances and just also I think breathing that sort of um, that lack of a. F- confidence i think he made other players kind of uh, lose their confidence with sort of the fact that he does miss these chances and just ends up kind of yeah breeding nervousness into other players mm. frustrating day mm. no look bailey look i was one of them when Werner came in i didn't get hyped about it you know people want to go and watch my welcome to tottenham video i did sort of have concerns and question marks around his finishing but don't get me wrong, and you know, that's where my biggest concern was. I was like, how's he going to contribute if he can't score goals? You know, that's what we need in this four line. We need potency. Don't get me wrong. I think he's been a lot better in sort of in terms of, you know, assisting goals. And he's contributed basically, what I'm trying to say, is a lot more than what I thought he would personally, right? But is it is it good enough? And what I mean by that is, and where I still have concerns over it, is games like today, right? The two chances fell his way. In big games, that's what happens. They usually fall to players you don't want them to fall to. And he didn't take them today. And that's where it will become costly, and that's where the signing will always become frustrating. He may do it against the smaller teams, great, fantastic. But when it comes to the crunch moments, you know, the big games, he doesn't have it. If he doesn't have the bottle to finish in the smaller games against relegation candidates, he's never going to have the bottle to finish in big games. Um... Look, like I said, I'm still going to be fair to the guy. I'll weigh it up at the end of the season, you know, once all the games have come in, you know, and stuff like that. But I am leaning towards not taking on the sign. And I get people who say, it's great value. It's only 17 million and stuff like that. But I'm sorry, if you're going to pay a guy who's on 180k a week, that sort of wage, he has to assist and score goals for me, um, not do half of the job. And you know what? It's half of the problem. You know, with him and Johnson, you don't know what you're going to get. And for me, yes, it may be a cheap signing in to fill out the squad or what have you not, but is it what we need where where, where we want to go? And who the fuck played that? No, he barely has been. He's not. He's had a few of those. Um, yeah. But is it where we, you know, is it right for where we ideally want to go? I'm still edging no on it. Yeah. Big up, Bailey. Yeah, I, I absolutely echo that. And uh, I think you probably would agree with us too there, Bailey. Appreciate you, sir. And uh, yeah, team out. He's done what he can. It's just I don't think it's end, it's still going to be good enough for the future and what actually we need for next season. And I agree with you in those bigger games, right? We need somebody like that to be a lot better. And think of also future games where we will be uh we will be hurt. Um, he reminds me a lot of uh, Diz- uh, Dyson Ma- Maeda at Celtic. You know, he's a guy that Ange, you know, once he had his squad, he used to bring him off in, on in games, you know, in the second half to bring more intensity to it, to bring a bit of more of a press and stuff. But the guy just cannot finish. It reminds me very similar of that signing. <laughs> very similar. And then uh, Martin Knightsbridge from earlier saying might help the missus put her son bed together. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Martin. That's what I bet. I was like, if I were you guys, you know, I'd look to, you know, make a kiddo, you know, or make the missus or, you know, a friend of yours, you know, get go get a coffee, you know, go make a miss, you know, go make the missus some breakfast. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that's what I'd say at this stage. It's just it's one of those games where it's absolutely pathetic. It's even pathetic, I think, to to still be watching it. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just really dead from this one, Martin. It's really let down. I think two or three times now that um, we've shown up to these uh, watch alongs against Newcastle, and we've just been embarrassed. Um, uh, Martin just been embarrassed yet again against this Newcastle team. It's never been fun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, end up joining you out there in Spain quicker than rather than later, Martin. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, I could do a holiday at this point. I know you probably wanted to have a sangria or margarita in celebration. Might have to have one in Cope. Um, and a dollar bed. Jerome says, same thing as Fulham. They played a back five and a four in midfield and sat back and effing and eff us on the counter. I'm sick and tired of this. We had a fear, Jerome. I'm not sure if you watched our pre-match thoughts for the members. I did say that if Howe were to set up more defensively against us, I think it could be a, an easier game for them. If they try to go more toe-to-toe with us and really play a high line, I sort of thought that would play our game. I think they did a version of both. I think at times they really pressed us, and at times they really made life difficult for us where they wouldn't just allow us all the time to build out from the back super easily and then in other times when they thought it would probably be a good idea to sit back hold maybe more of defensive shape they did Uh, almost a defensive masterclass from Newcastle to a degree I don't think I can show them a ton of praise because I think we also were just dead today and just bad uh, at the office and just terrible but I mean fair play to them I think they pressed us and made us uncomfortable but then they also sat back and 
uh, defended really well when they felt like it was necessary to sit deep against us. I mean, uh, do you agree with that, Dave? I'm similar to Fulham. I think they actually really outclassed us mm. defensively. Yeah, I'm just trying to think how I'm going to approach this or the right words to say on this because I think it's a positive but also a massive negative at the same time. The reason why I say it's a positive was because earlier on in the season, the first 10 games, no teams gave us any respect. Just press Tottenham, go and press them, win the ball back. And that's probably where a lot of that results came from. Since then, you know, and the injuries and stuff like that, teams have worked out against Tottenham. Our forward line ain't that great, unfortunately. The midfielders don't produce enough quality in terms of breaking them down. So it's rinse and repeat. You're seeing a rinse and repeat on that scoreline. In a way, the way we play do force them back. You hear a lot of managers this season going, the toughest team we've had to play against this season is Tottenham. You've had to work for everything, which is a positive in a regard. But the negative is we don't have the tools up front. You know, we can sit here and keep pretending that we do and that Sun's a striker and he's everything else. We just don't have the answers for it. It's been proven time and time again. You know, against the smaller teams, yes, you know, when you, you, you know, eventually they'll lose concentration and give you goals. That's why they are where they are. Against the big teams, that won't happen. You know, and we, do, we, don't do enough, we don't do enough against these teams. And I've been on about this a lot. You know, it's one team keeping possession. But you look at the likes of Liverpool in possession, you know, City, Arsenal. Maybe not so much Arsenal. Well, actually, no, you do throw Arsenal into this. They batter the door down. They're potent from set pieces from corner kicks. They put crosses into the box. They can play through you. They, you know, they shoot from outside the box. They blow balls from different angles. They batter the door down and try and unlock it from all different aspects. We're so one-dimensional. So one-dimensional. You know, if Johnson and Werner, you know, mainly Johnson, couldn't get in down the right-hand side, we can't do anything. Yeah. You know, and it affects Sun. It does affect Sun. You know, um, way too one-dimensional in that regard. And that's why I say it's a positive and a negative because we're forcing teams into this, but we don't have the solutions to it. Um, look, I'm just going to keep playing this way to the end of the season. And I, I, if I was him, I would too. I wouldn't resort and go and say, right, guys, we're going to play back on the counter now. We know that doesn't work at Tottenham. And it's not what he wants to do. He has to keep resisting this way. Um, but look... Let's just have real conversations about it. You know, we've tried to say we didn't need Harry Kane and we haven't missed the striker and this, that and the other. Now we're coming into the business end of the season where I've always said that will, that, that's where it'll count. We just don't have it. So now we know what we have to go and do this summer. So again, it's probably a bit of a positive as well, Jerome. And I, that's, that's the only positive I can have from today. <laughs> Thanks for sticking through this one with us, Jerome. I appreciate you, sir. And uh, Adrian Chia as well says this, they could have played Carius in goal and uh, they still would have beat us. I mean, they could yeah. have played the whole under-18s. I don't even think yeah. Spurs. We probably still would have gotten bullied as well. It wasn't even just quality that Newcastle beat us with. They also just beat us with actual desire and want and hunger. Like you could see that they just wanted it more. They were shoving mm -hmm. us over on every occasion, you know, making the life more difficult for us in the physical side of things. And Spurs mm -hmm. just were not up for it. Absolute weaklings, like really yeah. just wimps uh, and cowards in a lot of cases because you were seeing Udoji getting bullied by Anthony yeah. Gordon. You are seeing Johnson just sort of jogging everywhere. And uh, as well, even on that header too, Udoji and other players, again, like for that last header, just not even wanting to jump up and win a header for their for their own pride, for their own self-respect. It's, it's really pathetic, mm -hmm. really pathetic. And I think, yeah, they could have played the under-18s. We still would have lost. Jerome says yeah. six one last season and now four nil. I can't even go for a walk. It's effing middle of the night. I'm so done with this team. So done. I said that to some of the Australians and to Dark Sun G Jerome, where this is the worst game I probably think to have, you know, the nice kickoff time. You guys were late at night, maybe you had a few beers or just, you know, get to relax, not have to wake up at stupid o'clock for this one. And then it ends up being one of the more embarrassing results of the season, one of the worst performances of the season feel bad for you guys that have to put up with this uh if anything really it's more the the player uh, the fans out in uh, in asia fans out in australia and the oceania region those are the people that actually need a refund for their cable bill or for their you know subscription package or whatever it may be because i mean the times they have to get up at 3 a.m 4 a.m and this is the one time they probably thought it would be a nice night good kickoff to the weekend and uh, just embarrassed. I feel bad for you guys because seriously, only so many times you actually get these sort of kickoff times for you guys. And it's even worse, actually. You probably wish it was three or four in the morning, Jerome, because you could just go to bed or you could just be a crazy person walking around your neighborhood, you know, at like five in the morning or something like that. Just I'm sorry for you, my man. It really does suck. It's probably, no. again, the worst performance of the season, if not one of the worst. Look, I think this is worse than last year's, to be brutally honest. I mean, last year, we, 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 we capitulated in a spectacular fashion. But the reason why I say this one is worse 
we've had, you know, we have more on the line in today's game than what we did last year. You know, yes, we were still look in the hunt for Champions League football, but you know, we were sort of maybe, you know, humming the signs and were there that we were bad. Yeah, yeah. last year, you yeah. know, the signs were there that maybe the collapse was coming. But I didn't see this one. But to walk into this, the likes of Romero, the likes of Son, the likes of Bentecourt, people like that who were part of that fixture last year, for them to walk into this fixture and allow this to happen again is nowhere near good enough and acceptable. And that's what makes it worse. The fact that you've got Arsenal coming up as your next game after this makes it worse. Yeah. The fact that we've got two weeks now until that game makes it even worse. The fact that we already gave an opportunity away against Fulham, same thing, makes it even worse. It is not good enough. You know, you, Jack, you asked me before the game about similarities between us and Newcastle, you know, in the season with no European football. And I said, Newcastle string big results together towards the end of their run. We cannot do it, and we're not doing it. And everything about this one today is a lot worse than the 6-1 because we should have already come into this one with pride. You know, wanted to put everything right from last year. And we've done exactly what we've done last year and we absolutely crumbled. And we can't sit here. We can't blame Lloris. We can't blame Dyer. We can't blame them guys. But who I do blame is Romero, is Son, is Bentecourt. People who were part of that last yeah. year. And lastly, I'll say on it is yeah. the fact that zero respect for bloody fans... Them fans who travelled last year got an apology and a refund. And I keep saying this, gestures mean absolutely nothing. Do it on the football pitch. And again today, they'll have to come out, especially off the back of what happened last year, and issue an apology and a refund. And then all of us fans, people like me who got up bright and early this morning, pumped for this game, people that are, you know, have worked all day, come home, rush home for this game. They've let every single Spurs fan down today. And I'll be brutally honest, I actually don't want an apology off anybody. Yeah. I'd rather they just shut up, train for two weeks and go and put it right against Arsenal. But no one is here going into that game with any confidence now. And it's on them. So yeah. thank you very much. And well fucking done. Losers. I'm sick. I'm tired. Of I'm, I'm so angry. I'm so angry. Saying that, it is important not to sit here and blow everything up. You know, we still do have good things that we can take into next season, of course. I mean, if we could take that restart button on the season, you know, maybe I'm kidding <laughs> yeah, if we had earlier. Uh, Dropkick, your teacher says this is the worst. Uh, this is worse than the 6-1 scoreline uh, aside. Better than a uh, better team, Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle is depleted and we actually have a manager and a game plan. Worst game of the season. I think Dropkick, your teacher completely agrees with you there, Dave, because he's kind of said like you that actually the team we have now is theoretically better than the team we even played last season against this Newcastle side. The writing was more or less on the wall that we were going to capitulate at some stage last season. Newcastle actually fielded an even better team uh, last season than they yeah, did today. That, yeah. yeah, so the team today was even more depleted than it was last season. So in a way, this was actually a worse performance and actually an even worse game. I think Dropkick, your teacher, probably really agreed with the, with your with your thoughts that you just put there. I'm not sure if you need to say it twice, but yeah, I think you no. die is definitely in agreement. And like I said, drop kick your teacher. If you do partake in, you know, any sort of those texts and activities that, you know, are some of my faves, like a bit of barbecue and a bit of golf, I would, uh, I would encourage you to do that. Take your mind off of things. Shawnee Maddox says, great show, Dave and Jack. It's a rebuild though. Trust Ange. I think, Sean, we appreciate you, my man, and thanks for the support as well. And also being a, a loyal guy for just sticking through the whole 90 minutes, you know, through these yeah. roller coasters with us, Sean. And also even the fact that you put up a brave face uh, for the fan shows and try to make sense of things and try to, you know, recoup and try to talk about it, even put up a brave face to do it. Um, it is a rebuild, though, and a lot of people have forgotten, I think, while even if they're not Ange's biggest fans or even if they might find themselves to be more on the critic side of Ange, he has only had one season, and he, I think he's done pretty well with himself in this first season. Yes, there may be some concerns here and there with some bad performances, getting caught out uh, defensively, getting exposed in games like this, but not all of that I also think rests on his shoulders. I think a lot of that is the responsibility of his players and how they can actually try to make up for him and you know pay him the respect that he deserves because they have the beginning of the season where, you know, all lovey dovey, all showing, you know, he's some of the best, you know, tactics we've ever seen. This is the way we want to be playing, etc. And I think they have let him down on a few occasions, but and as well, some of the substitutions he's made, 
and uh, even I think too, just the way that we went about this game, clearly we were not ready uh, for this game at all. Look, I, I think the important part is that is you know with the Antipasto again we lose, he's going to be calling into question yet again, and I get it, I get it, right? I'm not telling people what to think. I'm only here sharing my own opinions. But you know, putting pressure and getting another manager out for me is only adding to the problem. It's a big part why we're in this mess in the first place. It's a big part why we don't have a collective squad. And until we let some manager, even if you don't want it to be Poster Coglu, until we let some manager do it, we're going to keep going through this cycle. You're going to keep seeing what we're seeing because the manager will have so much he can implement with the players that he's brought in to do it. And when he has to rely on individuals from other manager squads, it gets a bit hairy, you know. So you know, for me. I don't think Ange out is the right thing. Like I said, I think there's a lot of good things that he has brought to this football club. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I see a lot of people frustrated at games like today. It wasn't him that made the decision to sell Harry Kane, the star striker. You know, it wasn't his decision. And people forget that he's had to deal with that. I also seen something earlier on, and I wanted to bring it up now quickly, because I know I'm going to see more of it after this game. I think someone said, Dyer was right on this fool, um, you know, no tactics. Well, I don't want to see that trend because Dyer doesn't know how to take on tactics. You know, he didn't under any manager. And when you look at the way he played for Bayern the other night, he hasn't progressed. You know, so I don't want to hear people reference what Dyer said and link that challenge after this game. Nowhere near it because reality is, you know, last year we lost 6-1 and Dyer was a massive part of that. Um, so I don't think he can, you don't, I don't want to see people reference that to, you know, have a pop at Andrew and stuff like that. Did Ange get everything right today? No. I have my questions around the substitutions. I'm not quite sure to think about behind them, but I'll wait and see what he has to say. But for me, I'm still 100% right behind Ange and I still think he's the right man to take us forward. He's already done better than almost any other manager has in their first season in quite a long time now. And uh, of course, there are going to be some bumps in the road. It's not going to be perfect, and there are definitely some reasons to be concerned or some reasons to criticize. It's just that I think he hasn't done anything to warrant at all. I think you know people feeling like he's already toasted or he's already done as a manager with this club. I think that's absolutely absurd. I think we have become a bit of a Watford fan base, if you ask me, Sean Maddox, when it comes to how ruthless we can be with these managers and not even putting as much owner on the club. Like you just said there, it seems like, once again, people are more willing to protect Eric Dyer than they even are to protect their own manager, in this case of uh, Ange Postacoglu. Yeah. Coys Forever says, seriously fuming at these players. Uh, enjoy your niece's birthday, though, mate. Both of you yeah. enjoy the weekend as much as you can. I'm off for a Actually. pint. I'm very jealous of that pint that you're about to have, Coys Forever. I'll still have to wait a bit uh, till it's actually a, a normal hour to enjoy one. But yeah, my man, just enjoy your weekend as well. I'm fuming. I'm dig- like, just you get, you get a little numb and you just get sort of kind of lose that sort of life and lose that sort of, uh, you know, passion right now. I think, of course, being the delusional happy clapper I am, I will wake up sometime Monday or Tuesday and try to find a way to, you know, sort of bounce back. But it is really, it is really gut punching. It, it really is. Um, and then yeah. also when you really don't expect it. I think this was a game where, yeah, maybe we knew it was going to be tough. I'm not sure if a lot of us expect us to really blow away Newcastle, but certainly was not in any way like this. And it's just very gut punching when you find yourself having to make sense of it or having to explain it. It's no really, maybe there is no reason to explain it, no reason to try to make that much sense of it. It's just pathetic and it's just not good enough. And it does make you really upset. I'm sorry, Coys Forever, my man. Hopefully you have a better of your weekend. Not the right way to start it. And I know you you send that super chat in earlier about how you didn't want the weekend to get ruined. And maybe that was the omen right there. Maybe that was the omen. Do you know what, though, Jack? You know, the reality is, you know, we can sit there and try and not think about it for the weekend. It's going to be on our minds and our lips for the next two weeks. Every fan, everyone out there, even those, you know, everyone. Everyone's going to be sitting there racking their brains with it, you know. They've, they've ruined the weekend. Uh, look, I'm going to go to my niece's birthday. I'm going to try and enjoy it. And if she asks why why I'm uh, grumpy Uncle Dave, I'm going to have to say, look, you know, you're going to have to speak to the likes of Romero, Van de Ven, son, people like that, and ask them why I'm grumpy. Um, but look, I just wish the players would feel the hurt that we feel at times. Because if they did, this wouldn't happen. Yeah. 
big up drop uh that big up poise forever my my friend really have appreciated your support today 2j <laughs> good to see you 2j uh can we collectively agree that our third kit is cursed now whoever uh, approved of a diarrhea colored kit needs sacking <laughs> yeah i think chirpy out after this season 2j and also whoever has designed the kits for nike for spurs also needs you know a good lesson and also needs a decent uh you know also needs maybe some words um dave has suggested a green kit so at least we could blend into the pitch whenever we have a bad performance like this or maybe uh, we can make life at least a little bit harder for the opposition i would say one thing i hate about that kit is actually really hard to tell the difference between some of the players like no matter what hairstyle they have or whatever like you can't even tell sometimes which player it is it'll be like kulisev you think it's kulisevsky and then it's actually romero uh who has the ball it's very very hard um but yeah, I mean, this kid is actually, I think it is officially cursed. I think it is obvious. It was already cursed going into it. I thought that maybe there was going to be some sort of a, you know, magical, magical win here that would have uh, bounced against it. But yeah, I don't know. The kid is cursed and it's a I, terrible kit uh, after this. But commentating on it, it's terrible. I actually don't mind it when I look at it as a fashion, you know, sort of kit. But other than that, it's, it's actually horrible to commentate on from the watch long perspective. First of all, 2J, thank you very not, uh, much for not bringing up Kulazeski today because I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much for that because I was sneakily in his chat last night, hashtag Kulu in. I don't know whether he saw it because I posted one at some stage I've seen him giggling, so I don't know whether he saw it or not. Um, by the way, great show last night. Even though I didn't understand the word you said, I did enjoy it. Um, <laughs> but look, what I will say, 2J, is I think it is an optical thing. Uh, people call me crazy, but go and do the research on Alex Ferguson and the Great United kits and why he got them changed. You know, some optic person who's professional, you know, gave Alex Ferguson that and they changed it and it completely changed their away form and stuff like that. Um, so I do think you're on. I, I do think you're onto something. Cursed. Well, look, look, the whole club's cursed for fuck's sake. Let's be brutal. <laughs> but um, when it comes to that kit, I do think it's an optic thing. I think it's very hard to maybe see players when you're in such a nude sort of color like that such a bland color i think you will find that hard to see your players and stuff like that yeah um yeah get the get chirpy out get whoever designed those nike kits Aiden. out also not a not a not a big nike fan of uh of recent too i just don't think they even have been designing that cool of kits uh for us i did Daddy, like I like the I like the blue one. I like the blue one from this season, and then the home kit's all right. Um, but for the most part, I haven't been liking Nike all that much. Two J, appreciate your support, and also thanks for making it easy on Dave with Kulusevski. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm just that. not in the mood for any of them battles today. <laughs> shit. He's a kind. He's mercy. He has mercy. Two uh, J. Uh, nothing to say uh, from Donovan Ostriker. Just say uh, stick it. Uh, stick through it, lads. Um, just way to stick through it, lads. Thank you, Donovan. The way to stick through it yourself, sir. I bet you had to get up at crazy o'clock uh, for this one. I know you're also on, uh, I think, the other side of Canada, if I'm not mistaken, Donovan. So you do have to get up crazy early for some of these games and definitely not an easy one. Hopefully you have some sort of workout or some sort of thing this weekend planned to take your mind off of things, Donovan. And I would love to have a chat with you on a fan show or something like that to, yeah, yeah. to, to see where you're at these days. But Donovan, I'm sorry, my man. It's just one of those. You've been here with us before, though. You've been with us before. You know how it is. And we will bounce back. It is a hard one to take. I was ready to tell Jack to turn it off at 2-0 because I could see this coming again. <laughs> as soon as the second one went in quickly, you know, I, I just get so angry. But, you know... Look, I suppose it's better sharing pain with people rather than just, you know, sitting there and, you know, breaking my own things, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think this time we we made it through last time, Donovan. Some people are thinking this one was even worse. So I guess amazing that we made it through this one, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, crazy. Even when we found ourselves like still nil nil at whatever 25th minute or something, I just like it was hilarious that it still ended up yeah. just going the same exact way like that is ridiculous you can't you either laugh or you cry about it i think because mm. i really did not see it coming really did not see it coming and um yeah when we uh move past it we'll try to make more sense of it a lot of players do respect i, I think yeah. just it was, it was hard though because with the team of verner missed chances donovan everyone i think was thinking that spurs were at least you know going to keep it competitive and after we missed those chances, all of a sudden we just gave the game away and just yeah. made it embarrassing. Made it embarrassing. THFC till I die saying, I'm so angry today, but an Ange we trust. Come on, you Spurs, Dermatron. I appreciate that you kept the faith in the Ange. And um, 4 0 the opposite way. Dermatron's favorite scoreline of a 4 0. It's the opposite way around. Yeah, look, 
we got humbled today. We got humbled. I, we, you know, I just didn't see it coming, Darmo. I, I just really didn't see this coming today. Look, I'm as angry as you are. And you know what? I'm not even going to pull you out on your boy Johnson today because reality is every every single one of them were absolutely shit today. Every single one of them. Um, look, I'm just angry. I, like I said, I need time to process this and uh, probably make more sense on Monday or that, I'd say. Yeah. I'm just so angry. I'm so angry. You've no idea. Just almost none of them really even came off the bus. Just it felt like it very few of them even walked off the bus. It felt like uh, in this game, Dermatron. A user, uh, defensive coach needs firing. Players let us down. I, I could be wrong, but I'm not sure if there is a, an exact position for a defensive-minded coach in the coaching staff. I think that is sort of part of Ange's uh, repertoire, or at least part of his responsibilities. I'd say you need to take a look at... I, I like Ryan Mason as a guy to, you know, sort of be around the club, but I, I would say, like, him as a set-piece coach, he's clearly out of his depth because we haven't done that much going forward from attacking set-pieces. I think the goals we've even scored from attacking set-pieces this season are more kind of individual brilliance or individual quality that ended up being the goal more than even, you know, the attacking set-piece coach making it easier. And also from set pieces this season, like we have been absolute cowards. And I don't know why, if it's all on the players or if it's also a bit on the, def, uh, you know, on the set piece coach and not training, you know, well enough or hard enough on some of these. Because we really have been wimps when it comes to going up and challenging for headers and just standing up for ourselves when it comes to set pieces. Like we are so easy to bully in set pieces. And Ryan Mason, I think, does need looking at. Uh, in that regard, but I don't think there is such thing as a defensive coach, which in within the coaching staff, a user. Look, uh, well, I would say a users. I just think we need to toughen up a little bit. You know, Doji getting bullied off the ball for the first goal by Gordon. You know, Van de Ven. It looked like he was wearing slippers out there today. He was sliding all around the place. You know. Poro, you know, started off well, you know, first 20 minutes done all right defensively, but then just ever since that ball that went back, that led to, I think, the second or third goal at that point, you know, he sort of just fell off the wagon altogether. I think it was the second goal that ball was, just fell off the wagon altogether. I just think sometimes we need to be a bit stronger, you know. Doji's nowhere near the level as he was at the start of the season, especially defensively and stuff like that. Um, could others be doing more to help get back at, you know, and help defend a bit more? Probably. Um but look, uh, one, one thing about Mason. Look, I like Mason. Well, I sort of like Mason. I think he's a nice guy, right? He's never done anything to me and that. He's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. But I'm sorry, there's no way every manager we've had has wanted to work with him. I just do not buy it. It has to be in their contract that Mason has to be there. And the reason why? Because, you know... If it doesn't work out, he'll step in as your assistant manager, which for me, I don't like because, you know, how do you know, for instance, we could sit here and go, he's Mr. Tottenham, but how do we know what he's not doing behind the scenes is counterproductive because secretly he wants that job. All of a sudden, Mason comes in, you see a little bit of a, a bounce and everyone goes, Mason ball, give me Mason ball. I want the guy gone. He wasn't a great player. He was a bang average player and he should not have that much influence around Tottenham Hotspur. We've had great players that went on to achieve great things. Berbatov, Robbie Keane, Ledley King, um, you know, he, even he, Toby or Jan when they retire, people like that. You know, why can't we get people like that in around the club? Why we why yeah. do we have bang average people around the club? Um, I kind of originally had thought that he was sort of sticking around to eventually go on and start his own coaching career. But he's leaving um, his guy, though, isn't he? He's leaving his man. Well, if he's just sticking I mean, around, just to stick. Them, if he's sticking around just to stick around because he thinks that this is a great place to just sort of have a have a job and a career, then I don't really see again how much that actually benefits us more than it really just benefits him. And um, I, you know, there are guys was it like Duncan Ferguson and guys like that who have been that sort of player or that sort of person for teams like Everton, but I don't know if it's you know a real benefit to the club with someone like Ryan Mason in that case, especially yeah. if he's taking on an important role like I think set pieces because we really have been terrible this season, a user. And uh, Ian Cook says, uh, not that I want to. Kill- yeah, yeah. Just quickly, sorry, Jack. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be cutting across you. I don't want to hang you around okay. like that. <laughs> you um, or people out there because I know it's not nice to listen to. But Ryan Mason, a guy who wouldn't have been asked to defend set pieces because of his size and stature, what experience does he have in set pieces to be set piece coach? 
Well, if he also, though, like you look at Gianni Vio, at least Gianni Vio was genius at creating attacking set pieces, mm-hmm. right? When we were, when we found ourselves with decent opportunities to score from a corner or a set piece, we really were quite good. And um, we got a lot of goals against the run of play uh, under Antonio Conte from those set pieces, whereas I wouldn't say that's the case this season. I haven't seen anything that we're actually trying. I haven't seen anything that's really been cooked up or anything like that. It's been very frustrating. And um, I'm not sure what he's actually doing. I think I understand what you're saying. Like he wasn't a defensive player. So would he be that great at teaching them how to defend set pieces? Probably not. He still could make an impact, you know, you think from his attacking set pieces. It's not like you need to be a defender to understand how to know about attacking set pieces. And he hasn't done much in that regard for me. And last thing, just quickly, I'd say to a user on that as well is, I'll be honest, I've never once needed a specialist set-piece coach to tell me to go and get off the air and go and challenge for a header. The ball comes your way, you go and challenge. If you don't, you don't play. Mm -hmm. You just don't play. They'll haul you off. In Sunday League, they just won't accept that. And everyone knows that's played Sunday League. They just will not tolerate you not jumping and and, and being a pussy about and not getting up and challenging. You do not need a defensive set-piece coach to tell you that. So although, you know, probably could benefit from something like that, the players also have to want to put their body on the line. It hurts going for headers. You clash heads. You know, you fall awkwardly and stuff. It hurts. And when I look at the way we defend them, I question how many players actually want to go through the pain barrier to win. And then uh, Ian Cook says, not that I wanted to, not that I want it to happen, but do you think that if this carries on, uh, that Ange may get sacked if the fan base really start to turn on Ange, carry on the good work, guys? Um, Ian, for me... I'd just be surprised if the the board or at all, you know, the the owners were to really listen or cater to the fans in this case because they got what they wanted in an attacking manager, right? They brought in a more attacking-minded manager, someone who plays the style of football that apparently the fans wanted. Now, all of a sudden, the fans are against that and they want a more pragmatic and defensive manager. Mm-hmm. Clearly, a lot of the fan base just sort of swifts with the tides and just goes. They just want with, to win. They just want to win and they just want to go with whatever might be, you know, if they see something wrong, then they just want to go with the opposite because then that would make sense to them. I just think yeah. that as an ownership and as a as a board or whoever is making charge of the future of the manager, you stick with what you believe is the project and what you believe is the right path to success. You shouldn't let the fan base or uh, people like, I don't know, on Twitter or whatever it might be, or even pressure from the outside or whatever impact those decisions. Ange has had a fine season. He's done just enough, I think, to um, to warrant that sort of benefit of the doubt, in fact. And this summer, if he gets the backing in the forward areas and in other areas, we will be a much better team next season. And then you can start to judge him, I think, a bit more. It's just that the, uh, the ownership and the, the board, they would be stupid to at all cater or at all listen to the fan base right now after only one season. And in this one season, he could perhaps deliver us what was much better than everyone expected. The same fans that are calling for Ange out are the same fans that probably thought that we would be finishing ninth or 10th or something this season. So there's that too. I think they just have to keep their heads down and believe in the project that they had told themselves that they are set out to do. And if they abandon another project, then clearly they just do listen to whatever the fans or whatever pressure does come their way. And that would be stupid. Look, I don't want to go after the fans, right? The fans ain't the reason why we've lost this game, Definitely you know, and not. stuff like that. Um, I don't, I, I don't want to go after the fans. Like I said, it's not the fans' fault. But when when you look in years gone by, Jose Mourinho, because fans didn't really want him in the first place. As soon as things went wrong, he got the blame for absolutely everything. Same with Antonio Conte, and despite Ange getting off to a great start in the summer, there was a lot of people not sure. Um. And ultimately with Nuno as well. And when the fans put on enough pressure and they get fed up, unfortunately it does seem like that the board do listen to that sort of noise. Um, look, for me, I think you've got to persist with Andrew. I've made that very clear. I think, you know, and I've made this point time and time again. You know, 
I even made it in the build-up. You look at Guardiola, you know, he didn't get off to a great start in the first season, but was given time, given these players. They could have sacked him after the first season and said, you're done. They didn't. You know, they gave him time. They didn't realise they didn't have everything he needed. Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, the same thing. And I hate to say it, but Arteta at Arsenal. Look how many of their fans wanted him out, but Arsenal on board stopped by him. And look at the, the benefits they're getting from it. The thing is, and I said this in the, I said this in the summer, and I said it back when people put pressure on Conte. People were telling me style of football matters. And I remember sitting there saying, it's not the style of football that matters. People just want to win games. That's all they want. They just want to win games. And we're at that point, right? We're sick of not winning trophies. We're sick of not being successful. We're sick of being mocked. We're sick of being laughed at. As soon as Spurs lose, we're absolutely memed everywhere, right? We're all fed up with it. We've all had our ill with it. But the reality is that frustration gets taken out on the managers and it's going to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just here trying to build something. You back them. Your frustration should go towards the owners. Put more pressure on them to give Ange what he needs this summer. To back Ange and get them to spend on him what we need if we really want to go on and push things. Going after Ange Postacoglu for me doesn't solve a problem. It makes an even bigger problem. We can sit here and pretend that Ange is the whole blame for this defeat today. He ain't. The reality is, Johnson was on good form. Didn't show up today. He was still asleep on the bus. Werner blows hot and cold. You know? Um, you know? Um... Yeah, we, we lack we lack options across the front line now with the injuries we've got. You know the players let him down today in, in that regard. We can keep sitting here and blame him for absolutely everything, but he didn't tell Poro to make that back pass. He didn't instruct the players to stay rooted and not challenge from set pieces today. They're individual decisions that they've made themselves. So okay, you I sit here and I question the substitutions today, right? I don't get it. Like I said, until I hear the words, you know I'll understand. The reality is we can't make them the butt of all the problems at Tottenham Hotspur. And we need to stop doing this with managers. It's not helping us. It's only creating an even bigger problem. Well said, Dave. And Ian Cook as well has uh, uh, given as well an extra super chat. He's given a super sticker as well with a big thumbs up. And I do appreciate it, Ian. And, um, you know, even if you might disagree with us, I appreciate your support, my friend. And the way I yeah, see it is... entitled to their opinion, you know? I, yeah. The fan base is also, I think, totally entitled to have you know criticisms for the manager or have critiques really of anything or anybody at the club i've totally you know it's their opinion they're well entitled to it it's just to ian's point like will they cater will they you know start to listen to the fan base and the pressure i just think they'd be stupid to do that uh the board and the ownership i think they should stick to what they believed themselves originally they shouldn't go with the whims of the fan base or anything like that mm. uh the owners they would be very silly to do that and uh ian i think Ange has done enough in his first season to warrant that benefit of the doubt we've seen uh Arteta like Dave said have really sketchy seasons we've seen other great managers in the Premier League have sketchy seasons and then they were shown that faith by the board and by the by the ownership and now they're benefiting from it so let's hope that we uh let's yeah. hope we kind of use the same sort of lessons there a user says I was talking uh to my work colleague on Friday and said I'm worried about this game um one is that it was 12.30 kickoff, for which we never turn up. And two, uh, we were at St. James's Park. I think we joked about that in, to the members or something like that, a user. And I think also someone brought it up in the uh, channel predictions, uh, too, that those two things <laughs> were definitely two bad signs. I think it might have been Holly, actually, uh, who brought it up. Uh, Dave, where this, <laughs> was it? I mean, it's, it's silly because this sh stuff really shouldn't impact us. But was it slightly, you know, maybe something that we could have... Uh, you know, foreseen the fact that it was St. James's Park and 12.30 a.m. or 12.30 p.m. kickoff? Um, look, I think we sort of alluded to that, you know, this game could go either way in the pre-match touch. You know, obviously our, our heart always rules our heads when we give score predictions, but we did allude to some of the dangers that could happen, you know. We spoke about the sixth one from last year, you know, that we don't want to see repeat, you know. Could it affect this, you know, the players heading into this and stuff like that? The half twelve kickoff. Anyone that knows me and has been watching this channel us for a long time, Jack, they know we hate early kickoffs. Especially me, I hate them. You know, you more for for time me because I just never see Tottenham turn up really for half twelve kickoffs. And I think they're boring anyway. I think a lot of people are just sort of you know waking up and stuff like that. You know, athletes are. Yeah. You know, footballers are more geared towards a three o'clock kickoff than they are at half twelve. They have to put stuff down there, you know, to fuel themselves up down their throats earlier on in the morning that no normal human being would. Like a chicken and pass that nine clock in the morning and shit it's difficult you know and usually they're flat um not for newcastle Eddie Howe seems to get it right he 
seems to have got them fired up and ready to go for half twelve. And that is something where we we, we we could probably take something from, you know, get more gear fired up for these half twelve kickoffs rather than look at them as a problem is the Spurs fans, and I feel like it's inherent in the club as well, even with players and stuff. That they look at everything that could go wrong rather than look at it as a challenge and want to overcome it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, it's just you don't want to give ourselves that excuse or like, you know, that reason for why we should never believe or something like that, a user. It's just that uh, Dave is right. It has always been the case with Spurs and during these watch alongs that we do seem to have these pretty, you know, drab, if not terrible performances more often on these half 12 kickoffs. And uh, St. James's Park recently has just been a very scary place for us, really has. I think it's Nuno is the one person I can think of that's one you know, for us uh, away from home there. Nigel C, member for 18 months as a Flat Cat member, uh, Wicklow Supporters Club. It's the pub for me now. Come on, you Spurs. Uh, big up, Nigel C. And uh, shout out to the Wicklow Supporters Club. Dave, have you ever been over to Wicklow? Oh, I mean, the old lad hike all over Wicklow, lad. You know, um, you know the problem is, right, we go hiking to lose weight, but then it just makes us more hungry, so we probably eat more. That's why it's probably not working in that regard. <laughs> But we do like to kill ourselves with a bit of hiking. So, you know, the likes of Glen de Lock, up by uh, where all the army rangers is, there's a walk that you can do just around there. Don't worry, you're safe, by the way. You're safe. Like, you're not in any trouble and stuff. Um, you know, there's a good walk up there. Walk all over with loads. Uh, a great spot. It's very scenic here in Ireland. Um... Look, what I would say to you is just get down to the bar. I've no doubt with it being Wicklow, probably a bit of a country pub. Um, I've no doubt that, you know, the Guinness has been flowing and they do say it's better when there's been a few pulls off it. Just walk in there, get the barman to line up a couple and sink one after another and hopefully it drowns the sorrows, Nigel. But yeah. obviously, of course, do it responsibly. Come on, Nigel, my man. Have a good time. Have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself. Big up to the Wicklow supporters. Big up, Wicklow. Big up all the boys up in Wicklow. Hopefully, you're all keeping well. Hopefully, if I see you at a game, you know, come and make yourself known and stuff like that. I am friendly. I don't bite. I might look like a Rottweiler, but I don't act like one. Um, So, yeah, look, go and enjoy your days. And uh, Spurs fans everywhere around the world, you know, uh, finding a way probably somewhere to to cope with this one big up to you nigel c and 18 months of support as well really do appreciate you sir yeah drop kick your teacher uh says i think Ange walking out is uh more likely <laughs> than uh i guess him uh being sacked um i don't know if it's ever done that way drop kick your teacher i think Ange, at least me personally i'm not sure how much he would benefit from uh walking out of the spurs job because he i think wants to prove to um plenty of people that he can do what few have done right get spurs a trophy get spurs on the right track to success i think that is um it's a difficult job it's a very hard job but there is something tempting about that i think to uh, certain managers that are hungry certain managers that are passionate right that want to um show that they can do something that very few have and you have to be a certain driven person you have to be a certain brave person to do that and i think Ange is one of those so i wouldn't see him walking out of the job me personally just on that, Jack, like, just, just just quickly. Like, I know I see a lot of people skepticism around, you know, is he good, is he cut out for this level, you know, Ange Ball, this, that, and the other. But to the counter area of that, we've had managers that have had some of the most success in the game in Conte and Jose, and that didn't work. And they've also been made to look silly in games like exactly. this. Exactly. So, yeah. is it is it, is like we keep saying, you can't keep putting absolutely everything, all the faults of the club, on a manager after we lose a game. Yeah. I mean, he definitely can take some responsibility it's just it does seem like we are far more ruthless uh, as fans to the manager than we ever are to our own players and ever are to mm -hmm. other people around the club it just feels like we're far more ruthless to the manager for me drop kick mm -hmm. your teacher and um, like i said um dallas texas hopefully you can enjoy yourself this weekend sir mm -hmm. sorry dave yeah. no no hopefully you have a great day drop kick your teacher and then Al Ben says, the Prem is a different level from Japan and Scotland. You have to first compete physically to earn the right to play. Pep had to learn. Hopefully, Ange will too. Al, where I will um, agree with you. You've been sort of saying that, Jack, to a yeah. degree. I've, Al, where I, I don't think Ange has actually been caught out as much as people think. In fact, I think he exposed a lot of people in the beginning of the season, and they've had to readjust and reassess you know, how to play against him, and they have found some success. It's just that I think where Ange could take a lesson from this season is with his tactics and with his style of play. Teams will be even more ruthless than he might think or even he might imagine when they do hit us on the counter. He knows. He's not an idiot. He knows that teams, that's how they'll try to hit you. They'll try to hurt you on the counter. They'll try to hit you in transition. 
I just don't know if he's still fully aware of how devastating some of these teams can be on the counter because that's how they set up and that's how they play almost every game. Look at West Ham. I mean, they play with every guy behind the ball, every man behind the ball, and they look to hit teams on the counter. They'll be playing Burnley at home and they'll still try to hit teams on the counter and in transition. So I do think those sort of sides, when they come up against Spurs, they actually are licking their lips because they've never seen that much space left behind for them to try to hurt teams on the counter. So they actually might have more hope or more desire to play well defensively and to try to transition quickly because there is that there's more space than ever than they're used to really. And I think that's what Ange could um could think about. I'm not saying he should drop the line or anything like that. He should just think about the ways that teams would hurt us on the counter and perhaps prepare for that or at least have that in the back of his head uh, when coming up against these teams because yeah, teams are devastating. Teams can play terribly, which they have against us. Teams have played terrible against us and then still found themselves 2-0 up or 1-0 up from two simple counterattacks. I think the big thing there, Al Ben, though, is as well, you know, you said Pep found a way. People say he was always going to find a way. But the reality is City gave him a chance to find a way, right? Correct. They gave him that chance, and that's what I'm asking for us to do with Ange Postacoglu to give him that chance. Look, Ange isn't, like Jack was saying, right? Ange isn't sitting here naive to some of this. You know, he's not. But what's the alternative? Resort to more of a defensive structure that's, that, that caters to half of the problem anyway of this football club that have been half of the problem over the last few years. We have to stop doing that. Look, losing hurts, and I bloody detest it. I hate it. And I, I don't think it should be acceptable. I don't agree with partition pace and medals anymore and stuff like that. You shouldn't. It should be winners and losers, and I hate being an absolute loser. But when you lose, it should strive you to want to be better. And I've no doubt it will make Ange want to be better. And I've no doubt the more players Ange gets, the more things he'll try. You know, he might tweak it at the end of the season. But the reality is, he has to persist with this way. The moment he starts chopping and changing is when he gets sacked. People are calling for Conte to make changes. He starts switching between back four and back five at times. And ultimately, it just got worse and worse and led to his sacking. You know, Ange has to persist with it this way. He can't be catering to weaker players of this squad. You know, I get some people saying, you know, oh, look, you know, maybe he needs to set up a bit more defensively and stuff. But that's not what the fan base wanted. That, you know, we wanted a guy with the remit that was going to come here and focus on us, only us, and play good possession-based football. He's got that to a certain degree. He wasn't helped that our star man was sold in the summer. That's a problem that's, you know, come to highlight when the bigger teams come around. That's a problem that can only be fixed in the summer transfer window. A lot of people say, well, he's not doing enough during games. What do you want him to do when he doesn't want half the guys here? And I keep saying this. A part of the problem is a manager is still working with the Drakes. Like the fact that Ben Davies is still here from the Pochettino era. He's nowhere near done anything that Son has done. Son deserves to be here. Ben Davies doesn't. You can't blame Ange for some of Ben Davies' failings at, back, at the back this year. You know, you can blame Ange for some of the failings on the signings that he's made when he's here. But other players you cannot blame Ange for. And he sat there and he said himself... This squad is nowhere near where I want it to be. It's got a lot more work to do and stuff. But at the end of the day, a manager can only work with the tools he's got and his hands are tied to a certain degree. This will get better. With what we've got, we're setting up when we're getting into the final third. The only thing that needs to be addressed is that front line. We need more firepower. We more we need more, dead, dead, more quality. But we've got to give Ange the time. You sack another manager, that guy's coming in working with Pochettino signings, Jose signings, Conte signings, Nuno signings, and then Ange signings. How long is this going to keep going for? Yeah, well said, Dave. And Al, I think you're right. I think Japan and Scotland is an entirely different ball game and is an entirely different level. And I think he will make those adjustments and he will learn. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has been nearly as exposed as people probably thought originally, though coming from leagues like that. I think he has actually taught a lesson to them, in fact, at least in my opinion. And then Ian Cook says, I'm Anjin all the way and agree with uh, Dave. We can't keep getting rid of managers like this, but we do know what Levy is like. And that he probably gives in to the fan base or he does give in to the pressure, Levy, if, uh, if he feels that way. Look, like I said, I take people's you know opinions that disagree with me completely. I listen to them, I'll take them on board and stuff like that. But for me, why keep doing the same thing? You know, they do say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. I, I, look, I'm delusional, but I'm not insane, right? Um, so for me, it just doesn't make sense to keep doing this. It just doesn't. 
yeah, keep sacking managers. And when you look sort- at the three teams that were trying to catch Jack, Arsenal, City, Liverpool, they didn't adopt that policy. In no. fact, they doubled down and gave their manager even more time. Yeah, and I think especially in the case of Arteta, Ian, right? They found some, probably some very, you know, hot moments where Arteta's job could have easily been uh, questioned and could have easily been, um, you know, put on the chopping block, but they didn't. They kept that faith and they, yeah, they they owned up to what they believed in originally and and backing him and a project. And you wish that we could, uh, to look at that as an example for sure. And I agree with you though. That's why I meant by that would be stupid and uh, sort of, you know, out of fear that you brought that up because Levy and the ownership, I think they have been that way. They will give in to uh, sometimes the, yeah, the wins of, you know, the fan base and things like that. And they really shouldn't. They really shouldn't. It's uh, it's just mm-hmm. not to their benefit. Dropkick, your teacher says he walked out of the Australia team uh, due to frustration. Why? That's, listen, Dropkick, your teacher, you probably have more evidence, you know, than I do. All I can say is I think by taking the Spurs job in nature or by taking the Spurs job, I don't really think you are probably someone that just walks out of things easily. I think you know what you're almost signing up for. You know it's going to be a difficult job. And, uh, there are lots of those who have failed before you, right? Um, and I think that's what makes it a very, you know, you have to be a certain kind of character, a certain kind of person to take on this job, which then would mean that I don't think you're somebody that would give up at the first sign of a struggle or at the first sign of a of any sort of hardship. So I think Ange uh, will push through this, but you have better evidence than me already. <laughs> you know, I'm just doing this based off benefit of the doubt with Ange, you know, than, uh, than that one. And um, no. Dave, yeah, he had that fiery uh, breakup with Australia. What I will say is Ange has worked incredibly hard to get to this point to the Premier League, right? You know, um, I don't think he's just going to walk away from it that easy. However, he walked away from the Australian national team because, he wasn't enjoying it. You know, things he wanted to do, they didn't want to do. They pushed back against it. We could very well reach that point this summer. Postacoglu could walk in there and say, I need this, this, and this. And the board might turn around and go, mm-hmm. no, we don't think so. We think you need this, this, and this. Very well could reach that point. This summer's huge for this football club. Let's see which direction it goes in. It would be, uh, it, you know, we always thought that would happen with Jose or, or Conte. It could have happened with Ange, a uh, drop kicker teacher. I would suggest if they didn't give Jose and Conte what they wanted with trophies in the cab, they, I don't think they're going to give Ange everything he wants. Yeah, and I uh, wonder if it, what he'll make of that and wonder how he'll respond to that. Well, everyone, mm-hmm. um, thanks for sticking with it with us. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys for s- sitting down still with us. Still, I think close to 300 of you guys uh, in the house if you can for us smash that like button but we do appreciate you guys just hanging out with us trying to make sense of it with us we understand like you know plenty of the things we might say you could disagree with or at some times you know we might not especially me might not even make any sense because it's hard to make sense or explain performances like this because they're hard to take you want to you're frustrated you're kind of you know dejected from it and um, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the support today from so many of you guys like Dark Sun G, Paul Markey, Al Ben, uh, as well as, of course, uh, Koi's Forever, Dropkick Your Teacher, um, A User, uh, Ribsy85, and Chris celebrating 30, 30 months, 30 months. You guys are absolutely nuts. Jerome, Daniel Larson, Shawnee Maddox, big up Shawnee Maddox, the Alaskan Hotspur, Adrian Chia, the third kit still cursed Adrian Chia. Sorry, my friend. Danny Koi's. Belgian Hotspur, so many of you guys. Really do appreciate you guys. And um, it's just uh, another one of those hard days as a Spurs fan. We've been through so many of these on this channel. It's just not one that I think we expected to. Definitely not one we expected. No, definitely not. Look, I do have a ticket for that North London Derby. I'm sort of trying to reassess whether I'm going to go to it or not now off the back of that. All I am going to say is, fans, Look, I shouldn't apologize on behalf of the team, but I will. It's nowhere near good enough. We do expect better, and we do deserve better. I know I'm going to say try not to let it affect your weekend. I know it is. Just try and manage it as best as you can. And to the players out there, you let us down once again. You bottle jobs. You absolutely bottled it today. Nowhere near good enough. You owe us in the North London Derby. What you can't have is that embarrassing defeat to Newcastle. And that's the going on and win the league. We can do something about it. You better bloody turn up. I think we'll leave you there, everyone. I hope you can enjoy your weekends. I hope it doesn't completely ruin it, this sort of performance here, everyone. Um, but, yeah, I think we're going to go off and try to enjoy ours. And uh, we'll see you for 
I think fan show um, maybe the next time that we do see you guys. We'll see you for a fan show of some sort. They're all sort. sadistic, Jack, sticking with us through all this. You know, I was expecting all this, yeah, <laughs> They like to, to see the suffer. They're sadistic. They like the pain. They like our pain. <laughs> You're mad. But I think we'll end the pain now, everyone. We'll try to at least. And uh, we'll see you for the next show. Like I said, probably most likely the fan show is the next yeah. time we see you. And if you do want to come on and have your say after a game like this and put up a brave face, please do so. We'd love to have someone else talk instead of us. <laughs> so yeah. uh, please come on and do that. And if you do want to know how to do that, you grab a fan show membership. It's a great way to support the channel. But we'll see you. Come on, you Spurs. In the end, we trust still over on this channel. Yeah. And uh, we never stop. We'll see you guys. Everywhere we go. Yeah. Yeah.